Okay, happy Sabbath, everyone. Welcome to Foundation Progressive Sabbath Advent Ministries. We just want to thank the love for spring of life. Oh, what an interesting spring. So now we don't have spring. We have to blend spring and winter. So we have been having some sprinter weather, which is a blend between spring and winter. But through it all, I want to thank God for protecting us. Thank God for his goodness and mercy towards us. So this time we're going to our, our ensure we have come into his house and gathering his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gather in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gather in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gather in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Jesus Christ the Lord. So forget about it. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship Christ. Lord, worship him, Jesus Christ the Lord. Let us lift up holy hand and magnify his name and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Jesus Christ the Lord. Worship him. Worship him, Jesus Christ the Lord. Worship him, worship him, Jesus Christ the Lord. The church is now called to worship. Psalms 61 verse 1 and 2. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is high and high. Jesus, we just want to thank you this morning again for another privilege, whereby you have called us into your presence to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, is if we have and any iniquity in our heart, you will not hear our prayer. So at this moment, we ask you to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and when we're crying to you, when we are overwhelmed, when we are troubled, when we are bothered, when we are sorrowful, when life seems like a burden to us, we ask you to lead us to that rock that is higher than I. Be with us, each and every one of us, on this conference call, on Facebook Live, and on this Zoom service this morning. And may we learn something that we could apply to our life. And we just want to thank you for your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 334, come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Let's sing. 
come the fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some, teach me some melodious sonnet. Song my flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain, fix upon it. Mount of thy redeeming love, here I raise, here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help of come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandered from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace, oh, to grace, our greater debt. Daily I'm constrained to be let, let thy goodness like a fetter by me close in heart to thee. Prone to wonder, prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Oh, to grace, oh, to grace, how the debtor daily am constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter by my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. The scripture reading be done by um, Kalela. Romans 15, 4, 15, verse 4. For what so the things are written afore time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Amen. Thank you very much for that, Kalela. Song of preparation, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Let's pray. Oh, great God, we just want to thank you this morning for your goodness and mercy towards your people. I want to thank you that you have um, you have woke us up this morning in our right mind and you started us on our way. As we stated before, we just want to thank you for that opportunity whereby you say, if we, if we sin, we have an advocate with Jesus Christ the righteous, who is not only there to forgive us for our sins, but to cleanse us from all our righteousness. We come before you this morning as sinners that are saved by your grace. We cannot overcome without the empowering power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to realize this morning you are calling for a people that are peculiar, a people that, are, um, that must be without spot and or wrinkle, that has to develop a character that will meet your approval. We come this morning thanking you for everyone on this Zoom meeting and Facebook Live and this conference call and in our home right now. We pray that you may be with each and every one of us and give us the desire of our heart which should be a desire to seek and pant it after you as the day panted after the water. We also bring before you the various families that are on our prayer list from last night that are going through grieving of the loss of family members. There are some also that are going through um, um, cancer. There are some also that get news about um, the ailment in their body. 
um, we bring before you uh, our wayward family members and friends. We bring before you if there are any that have wayward children that you may speak to their hearts. We bring before you our our wives for those that are mar married, husband, children, grandchildren, uncles, nieces, nephews, aunts. We bring before you all of or everyone that is in our spheres. Also, we bring before you the United States of America and our beautiful con country, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and other Caribbean islands before you, that you may be with the people and help them to realize that they need to seek you diligently. God, as we continue this in, in this service, we just wanna thank you for your spirit that have been with us all week. And we thank you for your presence with us this morning. As we study, may we learn something that, could, that we could apply to our life. And we just wanna thank you for hearing us now prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. All afresh on me. Spirit of the living God. All afresh on me. Break me, break me, melt me, mold me, fill me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Tonight we hear today to listen to the message that God wants to hear through Pastor Stephon Barnett. And I pray you take this lesson that you learn to help edify our lives and also leave others to God. Stephen may all see him when he comes. Amen. Thank you, Kelly. Let's sing of worship. And Jordan Stormy Bank, I stand and cast a wishful hand. Oh, and Jordan Stormy Banks, I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. I am bound, bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will? Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. O'er all those wide extended plain shines one eternal day. There Christ, there Christ, the sun forever in and scatters night away. I am bang, bang for the promised land. I am bang for the promised land. Oh, who, oh, who will come and go with me? I am bang for the promised land. When shall? When shall I reach that happy place and be forever blessed? When shall, when shall I see my father's face and in his kingdom? I am bound, I am bound for the promise. I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who, oh, who come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Filled with, filled with delight, my raptured soul would here no longer stay. Though Jordan's waves around me roll, fearless I launch away. I am bound, I am bound for the promised land. 
I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who? Oh, who? Come and go with me. I am bound for the promised land. Let's pray. Oh, great God, may you give us the wisdom that we need as we study your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is part three of our Israel economic system. And today we are going to look at a very strange topic, Jesus and slavery. That will be our connection. And our, and our focus question will, did Jesus experience some of the things the children of Israel and black Americans went through? So this morning is going to be a quite interesting topic. And as we study this morning, as usual, what is God's message to me today? Is there a message from God for me today? What's a promise from God? What's a command to keep? What is a timeless principle? And how does this apply to my life? And as usual, we're going to RST. First, we must reason, Isaiah 118. Come now and let us reason together, say the Lord. We must study, 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. We must think, Philippians 4.8. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, we have to think on these things. So now we, Bible reminds us, and this uh, sentence reminds us, let us number our days and apply our hearts, which is our emotions and our, and our minds. In our minds, we're going to do reasoning, studying, and thinking powers, and we're going to apply those to what? Wisdom. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom, says Psalms 90.12. Teach us to number our days so we can have a wise heart, says the Common English Bible. Amplify puts it this way. So teach us to number our days that we may cultivate and bring to your heart of wisdom. And the Message Bible puts it this way. Or teach us to live well, teach us to live wisely and well. And if any one of us lack wisdom... We must ask of God, uh, give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. Amen. So for those who are on the phone, you could um, dial star six to unmute yourself this morning. Okay. This morning, um, question is, what is the connection between Jesus and slavery? Is there a connection between Jesus and slavery? What is that connection? Good morning. What is the connection between Jesus and slavery? Is there any connection? What are your thoughts? Okay. <clears throat> one minute, Sister Clark. May oh, get good, this good. One on the conference call. Just wait right there in the green. Go ahead. Can go ahead now? Go ahead, speak. Which this one should speak? Me, I did somebody else speak. Call. The conference call, speak. <clears throat> okay. Connection between Jesus and slavery. Now, I'm going to do the spirit um, with Jesus and slavery. Mm -hmm. If we don't have Jesus, we are a sin to slave. I mean, we are slaves to sin. It's only through Jesus we get freedom from sin. So slavery doesn't only have to be like somebody making you walk or treating you badly on a plantation or something like that. But being a slave to sin, it's another way of being a slave. You could be a slave to addiction, a lot of different stuff that you can break the habit. You, you put yourself in a slave position. So when we, are, when we come to Jesus, we are free. We are no longer slaves to sin. <clears throat> and even in the Bible, men were actually physical. They would have slavery in those because Jesus actually told you in his, God actually told you in his words, as when you have slaves, mm -hmm. how long you can keep them, and when they leave, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to give them, you know, like reparation, whatever, so that they could go out and be free and able to take care of themselves. So 
God, Jesus talked about, know that men would become slaves, and he talked about even as slaves how we are to be treated. And then we come back being slaves to sin, and Christ came and died for us so that we could be free from the sin that keep us as slaves. So that's how I see the connection. Thank you, Sister Clark. That's the connection, and that's one point for next week's part for sermon. Go ahead. Let me preach. Go ahead. Yeah, I just right, preach ahead of you, right? <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Okay, so you see as a master servant relationship. Okay. Any other thoughts? Um, as I was listening to um, Sister Clark, the thought come to me. Mm -hmm. Jesus is our liberator. Amen. The slaves, um, from sin and everything else. He is the great liberator. So where there is slave, where there is slavery, we have an revelator. Uh, um, okay. Liberator. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to fear because there is no power that is greater than his power. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Any other thoughts? Oh, go ahead, Kalila. Jesus is also like an abolitionist. Like she said that Jesus is our liberator. He's like an abolitionist trying to um, free us from slavery and bondage, like leading us to the right way because abolitionists, they were the ones that help slaves get out of plantations and be able to become free people. So Jesus is kind of like that as well. Yeah, man. So, so sister, sister from Bacchus, you said liberator and Kalila at your point, she said Jesus led the abolitionists, the one who leading people to freedom. Amen. Oh, wow. I see all, all the theologian, you're going to preach next month. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> any, other, any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? Julius, I need to hear a thought from you. I'm, I'm calling students this morning. Julius, what are your thoughts? What is the connection between Jesus and slavery? Hmm. Hmm. Um, okay, so we have... Uh, when, Sher I, Go ahead, Sherry. When, I at, when I look at slavery, mm -hmm. you are being contained. Mm -hmm. But when, you, um, when I look at Jesus, you are free. You are free. So you are free. You're doing it of your free will. Amen. Amen. So with Jesus, with Jesus, um, with Jesus, you can, um, you have the privilege to surrender your all in all, all in all, freely. Right, right. Very good. And also, I think in the book of Romans, chapter 6, it talks about whoever you yield yourself to. You're, that is the person you're serving. So we have to yield our will unto the great liberator, the great abolitionist, the great um, salvation deliverer, as was stated by Sister Clark. Okay, any other, uh, any other thoughts? Okay, so if there are no any other thoughts, I'm going to go right into the presentation this morning. And this morning presentation is going to be quite intriguing. Some points that probably we never looked at, but you all know me, I like to go and dig, dig, dig. So here we go. So Romans chapter 15 verses 4 was our text this morning. For whatsoever things were written a full time, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So all... Uh, things that occur from Genesis to Revelations that are written, it is written for our learning. And that we through patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope. Why? Because when we look at the various experiences with various individuals or uh, nations or people within, the, people within the Bible, we will realize that if God could do it for them, then he could do it for me. So sometimes when we feel a kind of hopeless, right? If we just by patient and, and, and comfort of the scriptures, look at those great promises and, 
and the, the great promises that God have given us, it will certainly build, build up our hope. All right. So here we go. So the question that we are going to be looking at is, did Jesus experience some of the things that the children of Israel and Black Americans went through? We review in part one about Joseph being sold into Egypt. We learned that in part one. We also learned that his brother sold him for 20 pieces of silver. When the famine came, Joseph's brothers end up going to Egypt to buy food. <clears throat> so sometimes be careful how we treat other people because they sold their brother into Egypt. And guess what? They thought, it was a bad thing, but like the scriptures in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. Jacob along with 76 souls end up living in Goshen outside of Egypt. And the reason why they end up living outside of Goshen, there was this thing about um, people who take care of shepherds, that Egyptians have this kind of strange way that they believe if, if you take care of sheep and shepherd, there was some kind of thing that was against their quote unquote religious belief. So. So J Joseph actually instruct them and give them exactly what to say during the, um, the, lo lo the location immigration interview. So when the 76 people came down and they had the interview with the immigration officer from Egypt, he told them exactly what kind of answer to give them. And that's how they ended up living outside in Goshen, right there outside of Egypt. They went to Egypt a free people, but later became slave of, after the kind the kind Pharaoh died. So the Pharaoh that was in during Joseph's time, he died. And then a new king that came on the scene put them into slavery. We have a similar story about Black Americans coming to America well, that we studied last week. The first Blacks that came to America were free. Then later on, as we learned, prophecy fulfilling in Romans, um, Revelation 13. Later on, the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope advised Christopher Columbus that black Africans will make, a, will make good slaves to work the new fung land in America. Come on. All right, here we go. The Europeans took this idea and went to Africa and purchased our black brothers and sisters. And our own black brothers and sisters were the very one who sold their own people into slavery, just like Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. You see, all history is, for, is, is something quite intriguing. Our black brothers and sisters experienced the worst form of slavery during the 1600s. The brutal treatment was patterned after those found in Egypt during the time of the children of Israel under the new king. Black Israel males' lives were threatened at birth. The black Hebrew midwife were ordered to kill all black male babies as soon as they were born. They were also instructed by this wicked new leader in Egypt to save all of the um, female babies. So they told the midwife, kill out all the males as soon as they were born. I'm going somewhere. When Jesus was to be born, was to be born Herod was inquiring about him. When Herod heard that Jesus, the king of the Jews, was to be born, he was troubled in his spirit. Guess what he did? And this is a point that we all must, must pay attention to. As Christians and believers, if somebody were to walk in off the street, I'm just using as, a, as an example, and ask us about our, our, our religious leader, it's good to interview them and ask them why, than to point them and say his office is there. Because guess what Herod did? He went to the church leaders and inquired where he should be born. And, and my grandmother said, these dodos, not realizing what is going on, not realizing that the man is evil, have no spiritual connection, actually exposed and the whole prophecy, prophecy rather to Herod. The story and the plot will be revealed. The story and plot will reveal the true intent of King Herod inquiry about Jesus' birth. So I had to read this Matthew chapter two because I find it was quite fascinating to me. Matthew 2 contains the crooked plan of King Herod. And now we read. So you could grab your Bibles and open to Matthew chapter 2. And I'm going to read the entire chapter 2 of Matthew because I think it is so fascinating and it has so much application that we could draw from. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Sometimes as believers, God is going to reveal things to people outside that we look upon as, oh, look at them. God could use whoever, whomever he wants to use. So we have to be very careful. The Bible says if we don't cry out, the very rocks will cry out. There are others out there 
who may not be in alignment as we are, as we know, Abraham was a was a was a um I, 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 idolater, and God called him, and through Abraham lineage, go um Jesus, the Son of God, was born. Then, verse two saying, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Could you believe? Here is King Herod, and here are these wise men coming and asking for king of the Jews. For we have seen his start in the east and are come to worship him. So we see the whole issue in these last days will be about Jesus, the bright and morning star. And we see the star was used to guide them to where Jesus will be born. And are all about worship. It's all about worship. Even when, when Jesus um, um, grew bigger later on, when we, we will discuss, he, Satan also, when he was fasting for 40s and 40s, when he became a man, it was also Satan was talking about what bow down and worship me. So we see the word the worship here. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Can he feel threatened? Verse 4. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And here are these ministers giving the explanation. And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judah, for thus is written by the prophet. Continuing verse 6. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, so now the wise men came looking, he called them privately, inquired them diligently, what time the star appear? And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, give them a command, go search diligently for the young child. And when he found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Isn't, you see how demonic that is? <laughs> Verse nine. And when they had heard the king, it sounds well. Oh, come, let's join together. Come, let's worship. Let us worship. Oh, the king, he's a king. Even the king is coming to a service. Let him go in our pulpit and, and proclaim his political nonsense. Let him do this. We are doing the same craziness. We, 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 we like the, the title and the position and the, and the education and the government official. We feel if we're rubbing elbows with the politician, then we become, we, we, are, bec um, we are becoming what? Valuable and have some kind of word. Ridiculous. But the spirit of this ruler, King Herod, was not in a good place. So he sent them and he told them to go and search out for the, for the child. And when he had found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship also. So when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the child was born. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child and would marry his mother and fell down and worship him. And they had opened their treasures. They presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And I, I, will, I will say here that this is the first baby shower ever recorded in scripture. Mm -hmm. and, and being one of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed in their own country another way. Let me tell you something. God have a thousand ways of delivering his people. And sometimes when people are plotting your demise, right? <laughs> and trying to use other people to plot your demise, God is going to use, use what? He's going to use others. The same people that are plotting the, the demise. Yeah. God is going to, yeah. God is going to use other the same people that you might be using to come and plot my demise. God is going to turn it around, turn it around for you, which he did. Because Herod came to these wise men, and I could see these wise men out of respect to the king because he's a ruler. They never say yeah, and they never say nay. Because the scripture never said the answer. They just said, hmm. But, but then God warned him in a dream that they should not return to Herod. And they departed to their own country another way. Now, here, the, the, the temperature is about to turn up hot now. God will always, I say, make a way for his children. And, and we should 
trust in that great promise. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And he promises that no weapon that form against us shall prosper. And when the enemy come in like a flood, he's going to lift up a standard. Continue at verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word again. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. It was at night the children of Israel left Egypt. During the night, it says here in Exodus 12, 31, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go, worship the Lord as you have requested. Because God, there was a bunch of plagues that was falling and his, uh, um, um, a lot of male children died. And, and he said, no, get up, get out, get out, right? So we have this issue. And the, the, the degree to destroy Jesus, um, to go and um, um, kill Jesus, was the very same degree that was given into, in, in the book of Exodus. It says here, and was there, 15 to 22, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, 15 rather, before I get to that, and was there until the death of Pharaoh. So Jesus remained in Egypt until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the law by the prophet, saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. God called the children of Israel out of Egypt. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wrath and sent forth and slew all children that, that were in Bethlehem, and in all courses thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise man. So he kind of plot the time period and say, eh, he might be around this age. So you know what I'm going to do, I'm going to kill. So if I kill from two years and under, I might, I might destroy him. Funny thing is, the new king in Egypt during the time of Israel had the same similar hip and all black male Israelites in Egypt. Exodus 2. Um, Exodus 1, rather, verses 15 to 22, and it reads, the, Then the king of Egypt told a Hebrew midwife, whose name were um, um, Shiphran and, and Puan, When you help the Hebrew woman in childbirth, look at the children when you deliver it. If it's a boy, kill it. But if it's a girl, let it alive. However, the midwife feared God and didn't obey the king of Egypt's order. They let the boys live. So the king of Egypt called for the midwife and asked, why have you done this? Why you have, a, have you let the boys live? The midwife answers Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are so healthy that they have their babies before a midwife arrives. God was good to the midwife. So the, so the people increased in number and became very strong. Because the midwives fear God, he gave them families of their own. Then this is what Pharaoh commanded. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people to throw into the Nile every Hebrew boy that was born, but to let every girl child live. Same hit. Hit on Jesus to kill him. Hit back then in Israel. Satan has no new tactics. Black American children are facing the same Pharaoh and Herod killer tactics. Every black male and female in the United States lives are not value, value, valued by our wicked law enforcement system. And our black men are killed while white mass shooters' lives are saved. Just look at the recent news coverage of the mass murderers. Verse 7. Then was fulfilled that was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, In Rama was their voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, racial weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. Black parents are in constant mourning because law enforcement are constantly killing their children. But when Herod was dead, <laughs> thank God for death. It's a blessing because, you know, if the wicked live forever, God help us. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. We are seeing the opposite here. When the kind Pharaoh died and the new king came to power, that's when the children of Israel experienced slavery and the cruel punishment. When the wicked Herod died, it was time for Jesus' parents to make a move. Saying, arise, verse 20, take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. 
God used Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt to the land of Israel. And he arose and took the child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. God used Joseph as the deliverer for Jesus' safety as a baby. So just like how Moses was a deliverer for the children of Israel, God had a, a little protector in the person of Joseph. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judah in the room of his father's Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding being one of God in a dream, he turned aside into the path of Galilee. Ancient Israel was divided into three main regions, Galilee to the north, Samaria in the center, and Judah later called Judea to the south. Joseph took a detour to Galilee, just as the children of Israel took a detour, um, detour in the wilderness. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, he shall be called a Nazarene. Jesus experienced the journey of the children of Israel. He went into Egypt and came out of Egypt into the land of Israel. To repeat, before a black man is born, there's a hit on his head by the racist slavery institutional system of the United States of America, law enforcement slave catcher system. Black parents have to talk to their males, and in today's world, their females are included about how to interact when stopped by law enforcement. His parents had to escape to Egypt to hide Jesus. Jesus experienced the journey of the children of Israel by going into Egypt and moving into the love, uh, land of Israel. When he was born, God provided for him through foreigners or immigrants, mirth, frankincense, and gold. This was the first baby show, as was stated before. It was some committed blacks and at times white people that tried to help blacks escape the plantation and their slavery condition. These were called abolitionists. John Brunk is one such white man that should be honored amongst black people. He was such a religious man. He didn't believe that any human being should be under the condition that the blacks were. And he and his family actually sacrificed their life for the cause of liberating the blacks from the plantation. It was one of his own disciples, Judas. Mm -hmm. You remember this old jo Joseph for 20 pieces of silver? It was Judas, a sambo black. And who is a Sambo Black? A Sambo Black is one who works in the house and think he's better than the others that are working in the field. And we see the same behavior today. Sambo Blacks think because if they rub shoulders with white, they become like, they become like a, a little mini God unto themselves. They don't want to help their people. They want to unite against the people into causes that are not uplifting to the community. So a Sambo Black that sold Jesus for what? 30 pieces of silver. Remember, as I said before, Joseph was sold for 30 pieces of silver. When they, are going to when they were going to be a revolt or a, rebel a, re a, rebe a, a rebellion against the wicked demonic system of slavery, it was some Sambo Blacks that sold out their own Black people, Uncle Tom. And a lot of people think Uncle Tom was a negative. We always, say, always hear the term, you are Uncle Tom. Actually, quite interesting what I learned in my older years after 49 years on this earth. Uncle Tom was a slave that refused to beat and oppress his own black people. And if you read that in the book, Uncle Tom's Cabin. So the information is there. So what they have done, they have taken the positive Uncle Tom, the one who was against the immorality of the white slave master and labeled him as negative, not realizing that Uncle Tom was actually a, a, black, a black person, black slave that refused to be cruel to his own black people. There is going to be a spiritual revolt or revolution and it was a black man, Judas, that sold his black leader, Jesus, to the leaders of his day. And Judas knew some part of Jesus' plan that he came as a liberator. But because of greed, and we see it as today, our own people will take money and sell their people to the highest bidder. Jesus was beaten and treated badly before his crucifixion. Blacks were treated badly before they were delivered from the plantation. It was a black man that helped Jesus carry his cross. The, the, um, the, the person from Cyrene. Jesus' experience of blacks in Egypt and America went through. Jesus suffered in order to take care of the spiritual famine and this earth. 
Remember that the religious leaders in Jesus' day were exploiting and controlling the members. Jesus came to enlighten and teach the people and to set them at liberty, their minds free. So, just a sum up of everything coming down. The nation of Egypt ended up with all the wealth and riches of the surrounding nation during the time of the seven years of famine. The United States of America and other European nations created economic famine conditions throughout all black nations of the world. America and all those wicked European nations stole the black people's oil, nation's oil, minerals, fertile lands, and other resources to enrich themselves. They are doing the same thing that occurred in Egypt. They are using the, the black man Joseph economic strategy. They know if you could control the land, all its natural resources, uh, the, the power in Congress, which compose of the House of Representatives and the Senate, the executive branch, which is the president, and the Supreme Court that makes our laws, you could keep down black people. The entire system did this injustice to our, to our black brothers and sisters by creating the destructive Jim Crow laws. The devil does not have a new strategy. The people of God went through a similar famine experience. The religious leaders, including the Jews and the Romans, exploited and controlled the people's thinking. Jesus came on the scene to break this demonic spell off of the people. When you examine Jesus' mission, it is similar to what occurred in Egypt and America. He came to set us free, not only spiritually, but physically, mentally, and socially. Jesus, the great emancipator, the liberator, the abolitionist, believes in segregation and community building. He's, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6.17, Wherefore, come out from among them and be he separated, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And in Luke 4.18, it says, this was Jesus' commission. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the, of the Lord. When he, liber when he liberated the black Israelites from Egypt, he gave them wealth and riches, which include clothes, food, money, and land. He gave them specific instruction on how to build their communities. He taught them about supporting and building up each other. He wanted them to be by themselves. He did not believe in integration, but segregation. He wanted them to integrate with him, but separated or segregated from the other nation. He wanted them not to learn their wicked oppressor ways. Proverbs 3.31 say, Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. The system of slavery is still destroying the black family, families in our communities. It is also destroying the white families and others as well. They have created crippling laws to bind parents' hands from enforcing discipline in their homes. If parents and teachers raise their voices at children, it is verbal abuse. When law enforcement does it, it is acceptable and right. The Bible predicted a time when children will become our oppressors and women will be, be ruling the nations because most of our men are in in jail. The system has poisoned our black men's bodies through their scientific experiment. Hence the reason for a woman taking over and ruling in the aggressive manner at times. Isaiah 3.12, as for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. Oh, my people, the rich lead, lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy part. We need to repair our black family structure. The oppressors have been lying, stealing, experimenting, exploiting, and controlling blacks throughout the entire world. We must not pattern our character and attitude after them. Stop selling drugs, joining gangs, and killing each other. This is what your oppressor did since he came into this country. Our oppressors created the drug system that is found throughout the world. It is all part of Revelation 18.23 under the word sorcery. In the Greek, it means pharmakia and it means pharmacy. The whole big pharma drug industry is predicted right in there. We say all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of the fornication of Babylon. All nations are, are, are dotish and stupefied by, by the whole system 
that is found in Revelation 18.23. The legal drugs and the so-called illegal drugs are used to keep the world in check. The plant drugs in our communities to destroy us. Stop allowing the evil in your families and your communities. Our oppressors are the founders of the criminal elements in our society. They created all the big mafia and gang organization to control the masses. Your oppressors are the biggest drug dealers and gangster practitioners. We are given warning to not learn or follow these wicked oppressors, politicians, crooked priests, pastors, teachers, and any evil elements in our society and the world at large. And we read last night in Hosea chapter six about the priests being murderers. They have been murderers, they're adulterers, taking advantage of children, of their church members. That's in the Bible, not Hosea chapter 6 that we studied last night. So don't follow these wicked people. And the Bible give us great counsel in Deuteronomy 89. When thou come into the land which the Lord thy God give it thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. All nations live in their own communities and have their own businesses. Black Americans are the only ones who do not have communities that have their own businesses. The Jim Crow laws that were created had deadly effects on our Black American brothers and, and, brothers and sisters. We can only help others when we are settled in our own selves. The gospel mention is not about integrating with the world, but coming out of it. Again, 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. When we are well, then we'll have the energy to take care of others. If your spiritual, physical, mental, and social life are a mess, what message do you have for others? Similar principle can be applied to our physical life. If we are not economically sung, then we cannot help others. Let us remember what occurred in Egypt and what happened in America. Jesus experienced exactly what every black man or individual is going through today. Let us not lose hope, but become truly our brothers and sisters keepers. Jesus, the great emancipator, the great liberator, the great abolitionist has the solutions for black people who are damaged by the institution of slavery. He says in Luke 4, 18 to 19, again, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had, anointed, he had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the gospel, the preach acceptably of the Lord. Jesus came to preach the gospel to the poor. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came to preach deliverance to the captive, preach recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. When blacks were finally free in this country and other parts of the world, they were poor and brokenhearted. They were held captives in their mind and also blind, blinded to, to various knowledge. We all know there's an economic system in this country, whether you were black that you were born here, you came from other parts of the world, we were all ignorant of the, of, of the economic system. So therefore, a lot of us didn't realize the importance of getting real estate and investing to, to leave a legacy of wealth for our children. Not only a financial legacy, but a spiritual legacy, a physical legacy, a mental legacy, and a social legacy. Because we all were at some point being captivated by in our mind. They, they were bruised and mis, they were bruised and misused. So blacks in this country went through a lot. And that message in Luke is our only hope, our only hope. It's not only a spiritual liberating message, but it's also a message to liberate us from every point, including from our spiritual life, our social life, our mental life, our physical life, our psychological life, our emotional life, and our economical life. Let us all accept this message and let Jesus come into our heart to heal us from all the ailments and effect of this deadly institution that was instituted not only in this country but across the world and that we still see of some of the effects today amen so at this point i'm going to take your your thoughts what are your thoughts before i give my summary points go ahead sister clark no i'm gonna unmute for nothing i'm in my head <laughs> yeah. i'm, I'm yeah. the silent listener right now go ahead okay. Thoughts, for thoughts, people, and what I've just presented. 
Yeah. Thank you. So, so thank you. So she's feeling motivated to do something after she heard what, what I presented. Okay. Other thoughts? Uh, I was in go ahead, ahead, Sister Sherry. Go ahead, Sherry. When you started at the beginning, you mentioned about um when people come at the church and ask the pastor, mm -hmm. are we not supposed to tell them, you know, we have to find out for us what is first before we send them to the pastor. Because we don't know what are the intention, what are the motives. Mm -hmm. And that takes me back to when I was a child. That is what our parents taught us. Like if somebody come to the house to ask one of my siblings or uh, my father, we were taught never, if they're not at home, never give out the information where they were about. Never give them that. Because we don't know what they have in mind. So if they're not at home, we just say they're not at home and they can come back, but never to give their whereabouts. And we see that we, the times that we are living in, we really have to do that. You know, that kind of, I didn't even remember that until right. we brought it up this morning because we are living in terrible time, perilous time. And I remember one time some years ago, we were told a child that some about three men show up at the church asking for the area where they count the money and they were going over to the children's section. So it seemed like they had an idea. They went in and they asked, where do you count the money? Mm. So after that, that happened, it was brought to the church and then they decide to have um, people work as security on Sabbath morning. So we can see how men hearts, you know, are desperately wicked. And as you rightly said, um, we can see what happened back then. It's the same thing that is playing out now. And as we always say, there is nothing new under the sun. It's just history. Just keep keep repeating itself. Amen. And we, we got to look to Jesus because better time not coming. Better time not coming. So we got to focus. We got to pray. We have to pray more, you know, and ask God to keep us, you know. Mm -hmm. Help us not to get fearful when we see these things. You know, sometimes when we see the when we see what is happening to our God and sisters, sometimes our heart really hurts. It hurts us. And right. sometimes we feel sometimes as if we want to retaliate. Right. But it's not for us. You understand? It's not for us. Right. So right. we just gotta cry out to Jesus that one day, one day we know that there will be no more suffering. No more police brutality, no more racism. But that day, we all be one. We all be one. Not black and white and um, Asian and whatever. One day will come when we all be one and one with God. Amen. Amen, Sherry. You sound like a preacher girl. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, Beverly, you have a point? No, I was just um, liking the discussion. And as Sherry said, these, these are not normal times. You know, we can't lift our guards down. We just have to remain faithful. Amen. 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 Where is this yeah. Like we all, we all said, there's nothing new under the sun. <clears throat> and um, we noticed how, like we said, the people did not even ask what it was. They just went straight and gave Pharaoh the information. And I always say, when we have to be smart, God give us a brain. Use it. Think. Take a moment to think. Even when you ask a question, take a moment to think before you answer. If we do that, even when we say in the writing sometimes because we don't think, the way our tone of voice or attitude comes over, <clears throat> could just not even make people listening to what we're saying. And I always say, if you go in on an interview or even the, the let's say the authorities that question you, you go for an interview, whether to get your paper, to get a job, whatever it is, if the question requires a yes, it's just yes. 
If it's no, it's no. You do not have to elaborate unless the person asks you. Please don't. If it's a yes, it's a yes. If it's a no, it's a no. When you do that, you open up the door to further scrutiny on yourself, and you got to explain. And sometimes it's stuff that we don't want to explain. If we say yes, no, it could stay there. Another thing, when you look at the whole picture, it was all about selfishness. Pharaoh was selfish because he wanted to rule, and he wanted to keep the people in bondage. So as they say, here come the king of the Jews. He figured, okay, they're going to have a king and he would have no more power and rule over them. Today we see it's all about power, the world we're living in. I keep saying, Lord, this is not a nice time to be living, but keep us by your grace. It's all about power and oppression right now to keep people down, especially black men, the black young men, that they just like if they have a target on their backs. Another thing to the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh was selfish. You notice he never warned all the thing that Moses came and did and the warnings God gave him. He never want, he never yields to letting the children of Israel go from slavery until it personally touched him mm-hmm. and his son was lost. Because of the evilness that he did, he never even think when he said the first boy child. His child end up being lost too. And it's not until it touched him and he realized, he said, okay, go, go, go. And it wasn't easy. And yet for all, the deceiver souls were still going at Pharaoh that already leave, let them go. He end up still sending his army after them. Mm-hmm. Some people believe that Pharaoh was drowned in the, the thing. Some people say he wasn't drowned in the state. Whatever then destruction came upon them because the waters came back and the chariots and everything went. So selfishness in his heart and this deceiver soul still make him go after the children of Israel. So, and you notice what's going on now. Mm. Because of the same selfishness and evil in our hearts. And because our just on the outside of our skin have a different hue and a different color, we can't unite and we can't speak out for each other until it comes to us. Mm-hmm. I was watching the trial this week of um, George Floyd. And then the pit, and I saw that Asian officer standing and his behavior mm-hmm. and how he back in the crowd because he thought that he was on the other side. And mm-hmm. he couldn't show no compassion or say anything. And I reflect, not that it is right, I reflect what is happening to his people now. Mm-hmm. And everybody wants to walk up. Be careful what you do. Life is a cycle because the Bible said there is nothing new under the sun. What when it was just as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. We mm-hmm. are to walk humbly with our God. Mm-hmm. Because we don't know when our time would come. And if we don't stretch a hand and speak out about oppression and about wrongdoing, when our time comes, there will be no one to speak out for us. And I look at him now and I said, you know what? Look what's happening to your people now and every one of you running wrong. Not that it is right. But you can see a parallel between these things. And we don't look because we don't think our time would come. Even as Christians... We like to look at other people and we like to suggest, oh, them not godly, them not Christian, them not this, them not that. If you were you would, a Christian and you know they're not, you would try to help them to come to Christ rather than criticize them. We have to be careful in every aspect of our walk in life. That's all I want to say. Amen. Amen. And, I, and Sister Clark, you just actually, you see the beauty about sharing and the beauty about not just preaching and don't let others make comments and share. Because you just share a powerful point there that I wasn't even thinking. It's about Pharaoh. When it mm-hmm. hit Pharaoh and it touched Pharaoh, same mm-hmm. thing I'm noticing in this country. It mm-hmm. If it don't to touch them, they don't. Mm-hmm. There's a sin that is coming down on our white brothers and sisters. That is coming down. If you notice. It's, it's like no. that one that killed him, 10 white people. I'm like, this, I'm like, it is like deja vu. Yeah. Pharaoh, the Pharaoh system now, it's turning back on Pharaoh's children. Yep. Yeah. And it's when it touch their heart, then they understand the pain of somebody else. And that mm-hmm. is true. But that if, was, we, if we sympathize and we learn to build a bridge 
and we learn to love each other and realize that we are all God's children, then we can come together and we won't want to hurt each other. But if we stay divided, that is what's going to happen. And this is why when God says, come out of her, my people, it's, and, and don't partake of it. It's not only the worship. It's about their practices and their habits. Mm-hmm. We are not to be seen as the world where our practice and our habits and our walk should be different than the world where they continue in their evil and wickedness. We are to be seen as a people separated from that. Amen. But we only think about the Sabbath that we're worshiping and the Sabbath, and that's the only separation. No. And yet, while we're doing the same Babylonian practices, we are to separate ourselves from their stuff that they're doing so that we may not be partakers of that, of that evil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So, it, it, Cheryl, I was making a point. He said, separate yourself from their music, their fashion, yeah. the everything. Industry, everything that is Babylonian. And guess what? Trust me, you, 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 you'll save a lot of a brain, a brain power and brain um, space if you don't expose yourself to all this madness that is happening. Come out mm-hmm. of her includes all the oppressive practices. That's so if, right. If you see they're oppressing the poor and they're, no matter what they're oppressing, because I have some agent student that I taught, and as soon as I see what was going on, I reach out to them on Facebook and say, is everything okay to make sure I have a, yes. um, a couple of Asian um, teacher friends? I'm like, is everything okay? Because, you know, it's, it, the world is really... The world is a really crazy place now. It's a really crazy place. Yeah. And, and, and we cannot, we cannot. It seems to me that there's something, I don't know. There's something in us as a people, as a black people, we have such a con- compassionate, compassion and, forgiving and forgiveness heart. and love to everybody. Oh my God, I don't know. We have gone through so much and we should have been, we should have been come the We should heart. have been the evil, the evil one who wants to do more harm. And this is why you see, and the thing about it, the evil you do live after, because if you don't do evil in your heart, you won't be thinking evil all the time because they have done so much evil in their heart. All when they lie in the bed at night, they want to know when black people come in to do them back the evil, but nobody wishing them evil like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True. True. so you got nightmares that you think when okay when what i do is going to turn back on me but we can break that cycle who would come together get at the table and realize that we have done each other wrong and 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 you know acknowledge it acknowledgement goes a long way and that is where forgiveness starts but we haven't done that for how much 400 and how much years they haven't done that Instead of they do that, they're still trying to oppress, and it's going to backfire on them. You see them in the, the, the Kakamimi laws that they start to think to take back what you're right, and yesterday is the same thing I had to say. What well, same as at the beginning is so shall it be in the end. They fight, had to fight for it ag- before, and they get it, and now they have to fight for it again because the devil spurned them on to start up the same old thing that was happened before starting up again. Mm-hmm. We have to look. We're not supposed to be of the world, but that don't mean that we have to separate ourselves, that we do not know what is going on in the world. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Great, great, great. Any other thoughts? Go ahead, Tanti. You saying something, Tanti? Right.
Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, so thank you. Amen. 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 Any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? If in I all of this, this. Go ahead. Um, in all of this, all mm -hmm. of that, in all of what is happening, what are, what are, what, what are we as Christians supposed to do? In all this, in all this, in this time of crisis, what are we supposed to, what are we called to do? We are called to preach the gospel and speak up against any injustice because God asks us to stand up for the poor and those that are maligned, no matter what it is. So he, said, he, he didn't give no us compromise. no compromise. He didn't give us, a, um, um, he just said, we are all human and you just to speak up for the poor. And you have poor in every nation, tribe, kindred, and people, right? right so, we have, so, so we don't have, we don't have to get up without guns and whatever and go and fight off. Look, no, you got your sword, Sister Sherry. Yes, I know. There's another me. And your breastplate. <laughs> another time, another time. <laughs> nope. Another time. No, we have to join the physical fight. Mm -hmm. People, um, you know, people, they figure they had enough. They, they're saying, we have enough. We had enough. Enough of this. And they want to go take a one-man army to go and fight. But as you yeah. rightly said, this is not what God wants to As he said in the Bible, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. Amen. Yes. So let me just, amen. Yeah. yeah, amen. So each. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. So each and every one of us must experience our Egypt, Egypt journey of life, right? Mm -hmm. Each of us will have a midnight deliverance from our Egyptian situation. Jesus has de delivered at night, each of Israel has delivered at night. We will take the blessings that God gave us in Egypt to our promised land. Guess what? The children of Israel was blessed when God told them to borrow what? Clothes and, and gold and everything from the Egyptian. That was for the reparation. Jesus was blessed with frankincense, gold and more by the wise men. Mm -hmm. At times, we might take a detour, but remember, God promised never to leave us, nor forsake us. The children of Israel, because of their unbelief, didn't go directly into the promised land, right? But they were what? Spent a, a certain amount of years in the, in the wilderness. God told um, Joseph to take Jesus to the, um, to the land of Israel, but he was free to take him to Judea. So he took a detour and went to Galilee. Some points that I did not include in the, mission, um, the, um, the, um, the discussion above. The children of Israel cross on dry land through the Red Sea. Guess what? Jesus didn't have to cross on the dry land. Jesus walked on the water. The children of Israel spent 40 days in the wilderness. Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days in the wilderness. We will all cr cross through the wilderness of our spiritual, physical, mental, and social life. Jesus went into Egypt and then was delivered into the land of Israel. We will eventually end up in the land of Israel. Jesus experienced everything that the children of Israel and our black brothers and sisters went through. Let us take heart that, that Jesus feels our pain, right? He was tempted in all points, yet he did not sin. He know how it feels to be inflicted with pain, how to be rejected, how to be scorned, how to suffer hunger. He went through all that. So take heart that we have a great emancipator, a great liberator, a great abolitionist who understand what we are going through. Finally, in part four of next week's Israel economic series, we will look at God's entire economic system he developed for the people in ancient Israel. So we are going to see the various system that was put in place for the children of Israel that we ourselves could adapt today to help us in this crazy, sinful world. Amen. So at this time, we're going to listen to tithe and offering in cyberspace. And we know for a fact that there's going to be a land sooner than 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 now that it be a land that is is going is God went and prepared for us. And we all have to ensure that we get rid of everything in our life that will cause us separation. So we'll lift the ties and offering in cyberspace 
and we ask charity to close in prayer and bless the offering, present offering at the end. As we sing, there's a land that is fairer than day. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place. So in the sweet, in the sweet, by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet, by and by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. We shall sing, we shall sing on the beautiful shore. The melody and songs of the blessed, and our spirit, and our spirit shall sorrow no. Not a sigh, not a sigh for the blessing of so in the sweet, in the sweet by and by we shall meet on the beauty for sure. In the sweet by and by and by we shall meet on the beauty for sure to our bounty. To a bountiful Father above, we will offer, we will offer a tribute of prayer for the glorious, for the glory, gave of his love and the blessing and the blessings that hollow out in the sweet, in the, in the sweet by and by and by we shall meet on the beauty beauty for show in in the sweet by and by and by we shall meet on the beauty for sure sister sherry yeah let's pray oh kind of merciful father we want to just pause to give you all the thanks to give you all the glory to give you all the praise and we want to thank you for the Sabbath day, dear Lord, where you have set aside so that we can come together via Zoom to worship you in spirit and in truth. True. Spirit and in truth. Open our heart, give us receptive heart to receive your word, dear Holy Father. Dear Lord, as we study this morning, thank you for Pastor Bino, dear Lord, who lead out week after week, giving us, imparting his knowledge upon us, dear Lord. Help us, dear Lord, that we may not keep this knowledge to ourselves, but that we may go out also and tell it to someone. Dear Holy Father, we want to thank you for this morning proceeding. We want to thank you, a reminder, dear Lord, that all that we experience here today is nothing new, dear Holy Father. You have told us about them before and we have read about them. Dear Lord, you know, sometimes our heart, we get... We get we feel hurt sometimes, dear Lord, and sometimes we feel like we want to go out and retaliate. But dear Lord, as you said in your word, the bottle is not ours, it's yours. So help us, dear Lord, that we may continue to hold on to you. Even though time, these things may discourage us. Help us, dear Lord, that we may reach out to you and know that, dear Lord, you have experienced some of this also when you are an out, dear Holy Father. And dear Lord, you promise in your word, dear Lord, if we, if we remain faithful, that one day there will be no more. All the crying, all the pain, everything will be over. Dear Lord, continue to be with us. Help us ever to remain faithful, dear Holy Father. Be with leaders of this land, be with them in their decision-making, dear Lord. Help us, dear Lord, that we may follow you, that we may read your word day after day, and that we may find comfort. Because during time of crisis, the only comfort we can find is in you. Be with us this morning. Be with the offering that will be coming in, dear Lord. Bless those who have given offering. And those who are about to give an offering, bless them. And those who don't have an offering, dear Lord, you may also provide for them. Continue to be with us. Continue to bless us. This is my humble asking in your name with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Sherry. Thank you, everyone, for participating in our morning worship service. Um, thank you for your donations.
uh, at this time we have some ministry matters. So our weekly prayer meeting we resume last Wednesday, and we change from prayer to half an hour prayer to an hour. So we start every Wednesday to Friday from 8 p.m. to now 9 p.m. And it, we're doing this on our conference call line 732. 434-2865. And we did have a wonderful engaging discussion last week, Wednesday and Friday, which Friday just now passed last night, and um Jose chapter six, which is a very in intriguing um chapter. Our keep hope alive first anniversary service will be celebrated this Sunday. Yes, could you believe it's one year? We started last year on April 5th. That was the first official um, invite invitation that went out to the general gen, general public. I believe we started in March as an encouraging group, but went into Keep Up Alive and on April 5th. Yes, this Sunday we have our first anniversary service. And no, we are not starting at 8 o'clock. We will be starting at 7.30 p.m. We are going to really have testimonies and song and poetry. You, you're, going, you're going to be a wonderful time in Jesus this Sunday. And as you know, this is sponsored by the Vincentian American Adventist Association. We invite you out right here online. You see our Zoom link. You, you join us this Sunday. Yes, our first Keep Hope Alive anniversary service. We are celebrating. So come and join us. For those of you who want other information and various topics and also our Sabbath school lessons, you can go on to our website, www.fpsam.org. And as usual, every first and third Sabbath, which is the first Sabbath, when you cook your Sabbath lunch, just imagine that Sister Clark is spicing up your food with her spices. And just, just, just imagine that. So as you eat, just say, thank God for Sister Clark's food by faith. We'll, we'll come back one day, we'll, come, we'll be able to come back to come together and celebrate. But for the time, we're going to be on Zoom, Facebook Live. And for those who can't call on our Zoom, we still have, um, we'll be using our conference call number. So we just want to thank everyone this morning for who attended our morning worship service. And as usual, there's no break. We are going to be straight into our Sabbath school service. And this morning, we are going to look about conflict in affliction, our lesson 125. Let us pray. Oh, great God, open our hearts as we study your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So welcome to our Sabbath school. And this is a place where we continue to study. It's a school. We are in church, but it's a school where we can make our comments and make our contribution. So we're going right now to our Sabbath school. You are my strength, strength like another. Let us sing like we know that Jesus is our strength and he's have strength like another. You are my strength, strength. Strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me, you are my hope, you are my hope, you are my hope, hope like no other. Hope like no other reaches to me, reaches to me. You are my strength. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me, you are my hope. You are my, you are my hope. Hope like no other. Hope like no other. Reaches to me. Give me the Bible. Give me the Bible. Star of gladness gleaming to share the wonder, low and tempestuous. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beaming since Jesus came to seek and save. 
sing. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the night. Precept and promise, precept and promise. Law and love combining, till I shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken, when sin and grief have filled my soul with fear. Give me the precious words by Jesus spoken. All of this lamb to show my Savior near. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till I shall vanish in eternal day. Give me the Bible, all my steps enlighten. Teach me the danger, rub these rams below. That lamps of safety, oh, the gloom shall brighten. That light alone, part of peace can show. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till I shall vanish in eternal days. Give me the Bible, lamp of life immortal, full of the splendor by the open grave. Show me the light from heaven shining. Show me the glory gliding Jordan's wave. Give me the Bible, holy message shining. Thy light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precept and promise, law and love combining. Till I shall vanish in eternal day. Our Sabbath school is conflict in affliction. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see. Wonderful words of life. Words, words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful, wonderful, wonderful words of life, Christ. Christ, the blessed one, gives to all wonderful Sin a to the loving call. Also, all the freely wooing us to singing beautiful, preaching, <laughs> praying wonderful words of life. Beautiful. Singing wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly, sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life. pardon and peace to all. Wonderful words of life. Jesus, Jesus, only Savior. Sanctified forever, beauty singing, praying wonderful words of life, beautiful words, 
Wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Amen. So grab your Bibles. I will study conflict and affliction. What is God's message to me today? What's a promise from God? What's a command to keep? What's a timeless principle? And how does this apply to my life? So we have question one. Are God's people free from affliction? Are God's people free from affliction? Let's turn to Psalms chapter 34, verse 19. And someone will read that for us. Psalms 34, verse 19. Are God's people free from affliction? Let's see what the word of God has to say. Somebody please read that. Many are the affliction, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. So many are the affliction of the righteous, right? But yeah. God what? He delivered them out of what? So many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of what? Them all, oh. right? Mm -hmm. um, what, what are some of the forms of deliverance out of affliction God usually used to deliver his people? Because are some people sometimes delivered while they're alive, right? Right? Yep. Yes. And some people might be delivered through the exit route for the, the Bible says what? All have sinned and come short of the glory. That's one, but what? One of the things that sin brought is what? Death. Yep. Sometimes somebody might be sick and their deliverance from their physical, tormental affliction is going to be what? Death. Death. Is it still deliverance? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's a, and it's a deliverance that most, a lot of people don't like to accept. So mm -hmm. we, you can look at deliverance out of their affliction as something that is just, you'll be still alive, but sometimes to deliver you from your pain, you have to go to what? Mm -hmm. you have to death, which is something that people don't like to really discuss. Right? That, that's one of the hard topics and realities. And sometimes when we when if our, our family members are sick with a terminal illness, we really want them to get better, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes that may not be the route. The route might be that what we be praying for for them to get their house in order. Right, put their house yeah. up, get their spiritual connection. So God forbid, if they if they shall not be healed or survive, that guess what? They know their life is hid with Christ in God. Yeah, but you know, sometimes we need to talk about death too, because death is not pleasant. Sometimes we have to come to terms, especially if you are sick and terminal ill. You have to come to terms with death. If you don't, then sometimes you know it could hinder us too. So we don't even wait until we sick and dying on our dying bed to come to tell me that. Like I always say, if you have a plate of food in front of you, you're not going to run around looking for another plate of food because it's there. Death is with us from the day we were born from our mother's womb. It's not a pleasant thing. It's one of the most evil things I could think about is death. It separates, it hurt. You have to mourn. It takes a while for you to get over but still, at some point, we have to come to terms with that. Because as long as we live and the world lasts, we will die. We're not going to live like Methuselah. So when we come to terms with death, and we come to terms with death in, in, in terms of our mortality, that's the only way, you know, most of the time that we can really realize the frailty of man and come to, to terms with God. Because if we don't, after the death is the judgment. I don't think we should be so, you know. I think about minds. I don't know about other people. Some people are afraid to think about that, but I think about that. Not that I'm a think about it, that I'm scared and scringe up in a corner. Right. Some people don't until they, they go to a funeral service. That's when it comes to mind for them. Well, for me, for me, Sister Clark, for me, death is one of those things that I have gotten a revelation with 
and there's a lady that isn't shy. You know, the lady used to clean a child or her husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. for, me for me is resurrection morning. I said to them, when I go to bed at night, I'm dead. When I got up in yeah. the morning, resurrection, the difference is I'm still in my mortal flesh. I haven't experienced um, 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 immortality, but that is death. So you experience death for all your life. You're afraid of mm -hmm. something like that experience every night. You know? So that's how I, I, I put it in a very simple manner because sometimes people yeah. think that is this big old thing. No. Well, um, for me, when I went and that, when, they, when I went to the surgeon, they gave me that anesthesia, mm -hmm. and when I get when I get back to myself, mm -hmm. I ask them how long I was there, and they tell me about <laughs> three hours. And after that happened, I I look at it different. When it comes, yeah. you're not aware. You're not aware of it, so it's nothing to get scared or fearful. No. You, no. you won't know. You won't know. You know. It's just like right. a, you, as Brother Stefan rightly said, it's a sleep. You just they go to bed last night. There was no guarantee of coming back this morning, so you don't know what is happening. So there's no. Are you afraid? So right. to, you're afraid to go to mm -hmm. bed. to go. Yeah, I'm afraid. It don't come like that. <laughs> no. You yeah. lie down there, okay, you might be terminally ill, you know you're going to die, but when it comes, you just they just go off into sleep, it ain't yeah. pulling you and showing you and say, and you pulling, you hold it holding on to your hand and want to pull you pulling. and you pulling back or you pulling and we have a tug of war, it don't go like that, no, so we just, no, it ain't going like a tug of war, you're right, yeah. and you just go, like, and, 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 and that is a relief from mm -hmm. suffering. Because mm -hmm. I remember when my mom was sick, and in the beginning when mom got sick, I kept praying and asking God for healing, and I would cry, and I would, you know, because of my mom, and then the sickness that she had, you know, it basically ends in death. That's when the relief comes. Yeah. And after I see her suffering, I come, I came to term with it that I'm going to lose my mom. When, I, when she did go, I felt it. But I start praying differently, and I start to tell the Lord, I said, Lord... If healing is not for mommy here, I know there's a painful sickness. Don't make all that pain come down on her for me. And mom used to have, she used to be in plenty, plenty, plenty pain. Before I bring her here, they were giving her painkillers home that she would take. When she came in, she kind of weaned herself off the painkillers. Because after a while, the pain got less and less until the last. When I would say, mom, you're in pain, she really wasn't in any kind of great pain. So sometimes when, you know, we got we to gotta, we gotta start accepting and changing up the prayer. As you always say, sometimes people have, a, 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 okay, they, they want to lose weight, but they're eating the things them that gonna not going to make them, they're going to make them pack it on. So we got to change the prayer and ask God to help them to understand that the things they're eating are helping the situation. Rather than praying for them to lose the weight because they're not going to lose it that way. So sometimes we got to change up the prayer too. Right, right, right. True, true. And pray that God will give them um, wisdom right. to change. Habit. And if I we see they're going down, we got to ask God, you know, to bring them to the place where they would, you know, make it right with him before they leave. Right. Right, right. Okay. But to run around being afraid of it is like dying in your sin. True. <laughs> it's so true. And the next person, how does God regard the afflicted? So there's a way, you know, because we know, you know what, God delivers us from all of our affliction, right? He does. And there's various means. Sometimes we get healed, right? Um, mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes the exit route is death, which most people don't like to accept, but it's part of the reality, right? right. And, and how does the God regard the afflicted? He says, so that they cause the cry of the poor to come unto him, and he hear the cry of the afflicted. So, brethren, God will hear the cry of the afflicted. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and he didn't specify here, you know, it doesn't matter who the afflicted are, what part of the world they're located, you know, um, how some of their own um, um, people from their country, you know, sometimes when, when we have bad experience with one, one pe a, a, a person from one nation, we lump everybody in that one but group. And if we see everybody from that group is suffering, we say, well, them, 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 this and them, that not realizing everybody have the individual experience and the individual persons, and therefore we have to give them the 
individual, individual treatment. We can't lump everybody in the same boat. True. You know? So God does hear the, the cry of the afflicted. So be careful that we are not sitting in a seat where our choices and our decisions are causing people to be afflicted. Because affliction doesn't happen physically. There is mental affliction mm -hmm. and a social affliction and sometimes even spiritual affliction. Some people, based on their personality or their self-esteem, they're not there as where it's supposed to be. And our very words could cause them emotional affliction. So we have yeah. to be very mindful the way how we treat people, you know, and our, our attitude and our behavior and our body language and our facial expression. That sometimes it could cause somebody to go in a real and depression. sometimes some of the affliction that people have we have to be sympathetic with them too because like mental illness and stuff like that it's not something you can just get over one to three right right so we have to be sympathetic we have to be kind you know we have to be there for people with, with whatever they're going through and this week i was just standing and i said you know, sometimes we all go into a, sometimes we might be going through a situation. And we think we are the only one that's going through the situation. And I just stop and when I thought of it, I just said, Lord, you know, there's so many of my brothers and sisters who might be going through the same thing that I might be going through from time to time. Mm -hmm. Have mercy not in me, but on each one of us that is suffering with whatever, you know, we're going through. We don't know. Sometimes people don't want to talk because, you know, people stigmatize and whatever. But we just need to send out a prayer. Amen. 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 You Amen. know, when you sit and you reflect on your own self, you realize you're not, in the, not you're alone in that boat. There's other people. You don't know who they are, but you don't know who that prayer would reach. Amen. 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 True. True. So, yeah. And that's a person whose heart is full of mercy. I was studying last night. Mercy and the knowledge of God. Mercy, yeah. sacrifice, the knowledge of God, not burn offering. Mercy, yeah. the knowledge of God. Because if you are in tune and you are connected to your maker, when you see his creation is suffering, it will cause something in you to move. Remember the Bible says, and Jesus was what? Move. move. Compassion. He was moved. When he looked at him, and what they were going through, he was moved. And if we are truly um, believers and we have a relationship with our master, whenever we see the plight and the affliction and the suffering of humanity, it will move us. It must yeah. move. Yeah. If it's not moving you, check your little emotional tank. Something is wrong. Something is damaged. Your hardware drive of compassion is messed up. You need to identify it from all the virus of sin. All right. What has he promised to those who are in trouble? Psalms, somebody in Psalms 46, one. What has he promised to those in trouble? What is Psalms 41, one, 46, verse 1, rather. Psalms 46, verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And I say amen to that, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. So during this, I call it pandemic and corona and her relatives. Oh boy, if we have never appreciated Psalms 91 before, I think Psalms 91. I think it's worn out. Was <laughs> Thank anthem. God. Yes, it was an anthem. It was our byword, our mission statement, <laughs> our vision, our motto, our daily spiritual food. Because we, we, don't, we couldn't see what is going on, but we were seeing the effect of what is going on. Mm -hmm. And I think in that very sound, it says it, it something about deadly, noisome, pestilent. I mean, the air will be even, the very air will have mm -hmm. it. And God promised us in that time to protect us. And trust Amen. me, this time of our COVID and Corona and her relative trouble, he has really been a refuge and strength. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. In the time of our trouble, yep, we all, we all testify about that. And it wasn't this is not the test the lie testimony, this is the test the truth. It was yep. truly an encouragement for each and every one of us during Man. this crazy time occurring. So, God is a very present help in trouble. 
You know, um, you know, when um, back in the island when we experienced hurricane, mm -hmm. it's like back then when we when banana was gold, when banana was the main crop, and mm -hmm. hurricane come. Um, it, it would just burn down every body plantation. Every body plantation gone. Mm -hmm. You could see, you could see one side, the east from the west. Mm -hmm. Everything gone. And it just, and it reminds me when Corona strike. It's like when you listen to the news, five hundred one day, a thousand one day. Just yes, Sherry, it used to be in the thousands. And you saying, oh my. And you, know, you watch all them march truck and everything outside and you want to know like where these people from, who are these people? I sat there and I was like, Oh my, you're right. No, Go ahead. It, hurricane that that mm -hmm. when you look out, when you look out, when you look outside, everybody feels gone. Mm -hmm. And you never in one day in your wildest dream think you will experience this will happen to humans. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But it happened. It happened. It happened. Yeah. And guess what? We have to be so grateful for Jamaica. Like we are still here in the land of the living. Oh, thank you, like, Jesus. You don't even want to go outside. You don't want to come knocking at your door. You know, it's like... Sister oh. Sherry, you talk about go outside. You don't even want to push up the window. What an experience. Right. Some people want to go back to their old self. They want to go back out there. And I, all they could talk about the normal. Get back to normal. You want to get back to normal? You want to get back to something better than what you had before? Oh, yeah. what, a, what a experience that was. Yes. So just join us by phone. You just press star six when you want to make a comment. Star six. Great. All right. So we on to um yes, that's what so yes, Sherry, that is the truth. But guess what? We appreciate life now more than anything else. Appreciate mm -hmm. it here. Appreciate people. Love people, else. you know. We appreciate human relationship. And I don't mm -hmm. care anybody, no man is an island. All them people who was prideful and have all the money. When Corona hit, guess what? They need a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. we, have to be, we have to we have to find ourselves in our humble pie. So, um, well, with what feelings does the Lord look upon his children? Psalms 103, verse 13. What feelings does the Lord look upon his children? Psalms 103, verse 13. Like, like as a father pities his children, mm -hmm. the Lord pities them that fear him. So, so as a father, what? Pity it. his children, so the Lord what? Pity it. Pity it. Right? So he looks look up on his children to what? With what? Pity. Mm -hmm. pity us when he sees us in, in our plight. And the next verse, the next verse, the very next verse, sorry, verse 14. What does he know? I remember. What For does he know? It. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our frame. He remember it that we are dust. And I hope we remember that, you know. You ever see some people <laughs> that <laughs> like mafia the tree, then think they're on top of the world. They, 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 they you know, they're thinking in you know, you, our frame, this frame, you look at us, right? You look mm -hmm. at a person now and they was highty tighty, right? Mm -hmm. They look healthy, they look fine. And between, you see them this week, and by the next week, you say, What just happened? Mm -hmm. And we tell me, it's in the meltway. Mm -hmm. We are dust, brethren. And we must remember that we are dust. You want to know if you're dust? Go look at some old picture and look at yourself now. Is that me? <laughs> you know, just, in general, let's say this piece of body, this piece of mm -hmm. body, fighting and take, you know, this piece of body, mm -hmm. we take it better than others. We just a mm -hmm. moment, this piece of body will just. Go, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so people true. want the breath of life being taken away. It's like that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah. So let's go on to um, question six. What has has the what has the Lord promised to be to the oppressed? I'm going to read a one to you, Psalms 9, verse 9. It says, The Lord also be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Amen. The Lord is will also be a what. A refuge for the oppressed and a refuge in times of trouble. So, brethren, if the system is trying to crush us and oppress us, don't worry. God said you're going to be a refuge for the oppressed and for those in mm -hmm. times of trouble. That's right. Trust so, thinking that last time we suffer persecution, right? Exactly. Exactly. 
experience a silver lining soon. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> I said we can experience a silver lining soon. It, exactly. Amen. Yeah. So go on now to Psalms. Um, Isaiah 43, 2, it says, what has the Lord promised his children when passing through trials and affliction? So let us see what God has promised. As we pass through trials and affliction, what has God promised us? Um, Isaiah 42, 43 rather, I missed it, verse 2. Isaiah. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. And you think this is this is the one? Um, um, when I when I pass through the waters, I will be with thee, right? And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when I walk through the fire, you remember? Think about the, the three the three Hebrew boys in the fire. Yep. And the and children of Israel crossing the dry, the, the, the Red Sea. The Red sea and, and, and then Israel walking through Jordan, um, the dry land and through Jordan. Mm -hmm. with us. And, that's why and here we shouldn't doubt because we have example that, examples that it happened already. Mm -hmm. it, it happened. And if it happened before, it could happen. Huh? Of course, it's the same God. He hasn't changed. And that's where our faith comes in, believing God's promises. And if you notice something, even the waters and the river, right? The whole, I, I, I was kind of baffled by what I've learned. So in my little brain, Sister Clark, I thought that all this internet system was in some satellite in the sky. Well, I was, I got a rude awakening when I found out that they run cables under the ocean from country country mm -hmm. and, and you just have the towers on top of the land to, to, to send forth the signal but cables are, they run cables on the, on the ocean and the first yep. thing that happened and the funny thing is you just like how the slave trade was that's where the first time they run those cables to england when they was doing the whole the whole did you remember telegram telegram on the mm -hmm. top and then telegram and yep that's that's mm -hmm. how all that started off and guess what i said to myself just like how god Confuse them at the top bell. God going to send one to the ocean. He going to tear up all of it. And cut up all in cable wires. So when they think they could communicate to destroy us, and they're trying to contact, they, they hear, they hear, they, say, they will hear er, 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 confusing song. Yeah. No they're out, but they're out there on these waters for so long. I've seen where how they run the cables, and they have to hold the full much food they carry and whatever, because when they go, there's months they're out there. Yep. Yep. And how they, how they lay them. So, they make, I think it's somewhere here up in uh, is Maryland, somewhere, uh, somewhere back up that side, they have the factory. I forget where they have the factory that they build all those cables. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that should tell us something. God, God is going to build us through this, but even when they try to capture us and try to um, prosecute us, he's going to be there for us. Um, Psalms 1, 1971. What did David say with reference to, to, his, um, to his being afflicted? You know what David says in Psalms 1, 1971? This is an interesting um, text. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might mm -hmm. laugh at you. <laughs> David, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statues. Sometimes, if some of us need, don't get scraped. Mm -hmm. And we get a little buff, we will not remember God. Right, sometimes we have to get on our backs in order to look up. Exactly. So and look up don't mean looking at the ceiling to turn our hearts and our thoughts towards God because he not coming down we got to go up to him for if I be lifted up I'll draw all men some Amen. of us want to bring God down but Amen. God ain't coming down we got to go up because he needs he, he, his intention is to pull us out of the mess we're in Amen. Amen. I love that text let's go on to um to nine when, when afflicted, for what did he praise? Look, look at Psalms 25, verse 18. Somebody read Psalms 25, verse 18. When afflicted, for what did he pray? So guess what? When we have been afflicted, there's a specific kind of formula and recipe we are given. Psalms 25, verse 18. Psalms 25, what? Verse Eight? Eighteen. One eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Look on my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Hmm. <laughs> Sister Clark, me say the same thing too. Hmm. <laughs> so sometimes there's a cause for pain and affliction, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Because you realize, looking at this, just tell me, sin in our lives is what causes the affliction and the pain. The things we do, the things we put in our bodies. Lack of rest, lack mm -hmm. of sleep, mm -hmm. lack of even drinking water or habits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause us to be afflicted. So when we are afflicted, we have to ask God to forgive us for all things. Because he says, our bodies are the temple of the living God. And if we don't treat our bodies good, we are sinning against ourselves too. True, true, true. Mm -hmm. What a thought, Santi? You have a thought? I'm on? Yes, <laughs> Oh, I did it by myself. I didn't wait on Shulman. Congratulations to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I kind of lost. Look on that. Was this a little deal he making with God there, David? Eh? Look on my affliction. Like a, a plea, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When it broke, when we come to him, you know, on the knees, and, you know? I love that part. Right. And I wanted to ask you a question, but I don't know. Um, it's a little fast forward. Um, when I said death is inevitable, I just um, didn't memorize the um, definition much. And since the clock is it's hard to accept that, eh? you know that. To accept yeah, that's what I said, hard to accept because it's an enemy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so when I say inevitable, and that's something we don't really prepare for, we never really, you know, prepare for that. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Inevitable, it, brother. What is it inevitable? I just think... It's something we all have to experience. And people don't understand yeah. it. Even though... We can't run from it, so might as well we, 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 we come to terms with it. No escape, Even acceptance. We, <laughs> you know, we have to die sin yeah we have to mortify and kill sin and if you notice when if you go and you hit a dead body right does a dead person respond no nope. no nope. so guess what when we are dead to sin when people come and they're trying to poke us and trying to entrap us and trying to say all kind of mean words and try to abuse us guess what happened because this the man of sin the sin the sinful nature is is crucified with christ Never mm -hmm. that I live, but Christ who will be living in me. When they poke us, could they um rise raise up that if we are connected to Jesus? No. There's no, should not rise. Huh? No, you can't put your Bible down and give nobody peace of your mind. The only peace I should give. No, then you ain't gonna leave with none of much time you have to put down the Bible. The Bible and all would run away from us after a while. <laughs> <laughs> like how much time you go drop me and put me down <laughs> and by the time you finish and give a piece if you have a loaf of bread you keep giving after a while you're going to have none then you're gone insane then at least mm -hmm. little thing that touches you you're going to fly off the handle yeah. mm -hmm. so we have to stop giving what we mind because God give everybody one they don't need an extra piece of it because they head go overload and explode keep your mind for yourself it's yours stop giving people peace and giving it away giving it away giving it away <laughs> And uh, Pastor Bino, <laughs> Pastor Bino, yes, go ahead. Hello. Yes, How come we didn't know about um the the um internet was um under the sea? How come that was a secret? No, I didn't hear about that. How long it was hidden? Or, or it, it has the been. Revelation? It was mm -hmm. not my feet. The reason why I mention it is because of the text in Isaiah forty three two about the waters and shall not overflow us and through the the rivers. So I kind of kind of include that there to show us that even when during these last days when the government and the system the world system the, the yes. Catholic religious um, institution and governmental authorities will be trying to destroy God's people just like the yes. talk here that was confounded I have a strong feeling that God will send some little rough up sea down then bust up all the cable wire True. and smash up all the stuff the satellite dishes in the sky so that's why we have to keep claiming God's promises that you Amen. Yep. He said, when we say peace and safety, we're going to come. And then destruction. When we think they oh, have it question. all and they have everything in place to do what they want to do, going to turn it around. Um, not to you, Randy, what was, it was directed to. I was wondering, um, I'm talking about the government and, and history and everything. Did anybody know about, uh, have an idea of the cable, how it was run, you know? 
I want to, you know, why it was secretive, you know, now that I'm hearing it from you. That's for the secretive. First time. That's secretive. Uh -huh. Everything it's is there if you want to know. Is the, is the uh -huh, but nobody never really say how it was done. I mean, it, it wasn't in the media. Uh, a lot yeah, of people don't tell have you that. Never, when they build in a tower, they don't come out and tell you how they build in the tower. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You just and see the building go up and cross, it's the same thing. And it's, it's an operation, so. Why didn't they run it in the sky? Like how they want to um, dim the sun now? Yeah, no, don't worry about that, Tante. We'll, 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 <laughs> okay, okay, just an input, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why not in the sky? They're so powerful. Mm -hmm. Right. suffering. So, through, um, though he was a son in Hebrews chapter 5 8, though he was a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. So, hmm. there's, there's, a, a, there's, a, 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 there's, there's something that suffering does for us. Yeah. That we all need to really do. You have to learn what obedience, mm -hmm. because it's during this time when you're suffering, you know, you you develop patience, right? Sometimes, again, back to something that we all could um can connect to. If we are sick physically, right, we have to be patient for nature to take its course, right? For yeah, our, yeah. to be healed, and sometimes people don't have the patience, and as a result of that mindset. And that fretful attitude, it affects the healing process. It does. It sometimes even affects your faith. Some people are questioning, so why is this thing happening to me? Excuse me? What 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 you what? King Tut? Because you're alive and you have feelings. Um, to remind you of your mortality. <laughs> to remind you of your mortality. I don't know if you remember back home, there was a guy at the hospital. Uh -huh. What was his name? He was um, like disabled, kind of born. Right. Uh -huh. I can't remember the name, but he spent all his years was at the hospital. I can't remember. His oh. I can't you remember. mean the little twist up fellow? Yeah, what, is it, what was his name? Oh, I can't, can't remember. remember, but I know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. he to go older, they put, put him over, they just send him, transfer him to the poor. Mm -hmm. And every time you go there and tell him about God, he will always be angry with that. Because he would tell, he would say, "You mean there, there is a God and have me looking like this? If there's a God, why am I in this? Why am I? Why, why am I in this state?" Mm. You know, and sometimes people get sick, and instead of they humble themselves and see God, because mm -hmm. right sickness, sickness was a was made to humble. Sherry, the guy named Philip. Oh yes, Philip. Yes, it was Philip. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, I was trying to get on and I'm muting and then it went blank. I couldn't get on. So that's why yeah. you didn't hear it from me. I just had to okay. be fighting. Yes, yes. Don't worry, it was after me, Sister Bacchus. I was in trouble all morning. <laughs> and, um, go ahead. And then afterward, I had a muscle pull that was giving me the eruption. Uh oh. The, devil, the enemy trying to get you back. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Keep you from coming on. Yeah, but but you know, in, and in, in, in when we suffer affliction in our situation, oh, we, we, we throw up our hand in the air and we start to say, why me, why me, why me? But if we don't go through anything, we won't have a testimony to mm -hmm. tell anybody. Yes, right. And we must remember, we are not, we are not that special that it's, that when we suffer something, we're the only one in the whole world that's going through it. There's so mm -hmm. many apostles going through it. And somewhere, somehow, you might meet somebody who you have in a conversation will be telling you the same thing and you have experienced it. And you can witness to them, to help them and to tell them, you know, how you were able to manage. And in every situation, we can't forget God. You mm -hmm. And he, you, we got to understand certain things come our way to strengthen us, to build yeah. our faith and our confidence. If we don't go through anything, we would not know how good God is to us. So sometimes when certain things come our way, we got to be thankful. It's not pleasant and it's not nice. But if you don't go through anything, you won't have an experience to tell. <laughs> Sister Clark, you know, I'm mentioning that. Um, sometimes we think yeah. we alone are suffering. You but know, I just remember Joe. I just want to laugh him. We're not that special. Okay, yes. but sometimes against Sister Clark, you hear some people talk about their mother. 
And the way they're going to talk about their mother, we have to ask ourselves, wait, like we don't have a mother. Mm-hmm. It's like we don't have one because they 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 carry on like they their mother is the only one. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people feel about their mother. We have to ask ourselves, so what about our mother? Like we don't have none. Mm-hmm. Hey, this, this is a, this is a set of biased feelings about mother sister Sherry. <laughs> I'm a mother. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> there is a little point I want to make um, in regards to suffering and so on. When they said, like I read in something, I said the iron must get plenty heat before it bend. Mm-hmm. So that um, with us, you know, and endurance and suffering and so on. And we don't really have to say why us, and we should be saying have mercy on us, forgive us our sins. And Sister Sherry, when we talk about, um, the, we are talking about the dust and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, you never. They say with regards to our body, when we de- when we die, nobody would say, um, where is it a sherry? Where is the burying? They say the body. Where right. is the body going? Where is the body being put? Yeah. Where is the body flying out? The body. <laughs> <laughs> no, no longer it's a sherry. Correct. 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 Because there's no more sister. There's no sherry. It's just yeah. a body leave. The body. And, and, and another thing. When we go through affliction, that same th- the affliction is not going to be something that happened to us only one time. But after we have experienced it, if we face that again, we know to cross it like you go down the river. Amen. And you figure out how to cross. And you know, you jump from this stone to that stone that you get across. When you go there next time, you're not going to take that long to figure it out. You're going to know which stone to jump and to get across to the next bank. So in good time, <laughs> so in good time, we know we'll share the good time. But when affliction comes now, we will share it. So, you know, and this is how it is. It life is a is experience, and we learn from the experiences. Amen. Amen. You know that's why the curious is a class, as you told there. When they say, you know, there's a little phrase go once, once, twice shy. And I remember working on a job, and this little guy, there was a, the mother had a lamp right on the floor to shine, and he, he was in the crib, so she put him down. He's a toddler, and um. She, she didn't really check on anything. He went and hold the bulb. And that little boy, this little baby hand was like on fire. And she takes it and she run it under the pipe. I think probably the pipe probably was hot water was running on it before. So, you know, no hot water was running. So that little guy gets second injury. You understand? And she tells me she didn't know he was, he's so smart. She didn't know he was going to touch the bulb. I thought, eh? Hmm. But it's light. You would got to, I'd be attracted to it. <laughs> So I know that little body, he must be scared, so afraid of, fly, you know, shy, you know, from fire and light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he has a reminder. He has something there to remind him. Now. That's right. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. 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 More than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the question. I, 12. You have a point? Okay. Imperfect mm-hmm. character, what must come to all? Hebrews 12, 5 to 6. Somebody read that to me. Hebrews 12, 5 to 6. And I, I hope you're feeling much better. Hebrews 12, 5 to 6. Hebrews 12. And he have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despite not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteth, and scoreth every son whom he receiveth. Exactly. So when you get in your little blows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that a remedy? <laughs> um, you know, there is a thing said that I think it's in the Bible. A child leave to himself yes. would bring shame to his mother. Yes. 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 Now. If we do not, if the Lord do not chase us, or if our parents didn't chase us, or if we have our children and we let them to do, leave them to do what they want to do, and every time, what kind of child are we bringing up? What kind of, what would be their future? I always hear the story that there was a young man and his parents leave him to do everything he wanted to do. Anything he wanted to do, it was okay, whether good or bad. 
And when he grew up, he got into trouble. And he realized that his parents didn't do him a fa favor. So he took his father into the forest. And when he get a twig, to a twig, he asked his father, he said, Dad, could you break, bend that twig? And Dad said, yes. He said, well, bend it and the father break it. He go up to us, uh, something little harder. He said, Dad, can you break it? He bend it. He didn't break it, but he bend it. He was able to bend it. And then he moved on to something bigger. And he said, Dad, can you bend that? And Dad said, who do you think I am? I can't bend that as a grown tree. He said, <clears throat> you see that tree? That is me. That is me. When I was down there, you didn't, you could have bent me and break me, but you didn't do it. When I get a little older, you could have bent me. You didn't do it. So now I am here, now I'm grown. There is nothing you can do. For me now. Hmm? Right, because I'm grown. And look, the trouble I'm getting into, if you had break me there, Perhaps I won't get in this trouble. And they say, his shoot is that. If it was so or what. So right, there's a moral behind it, regardless yes. of if it's true or not. Yeah. Sometimes we have our children and we say, oh, they're small, they go grow out of it. <laughs> they grow out of it and they grow into it. Yep. Yeah. They grow into it. And the Lord, yeah. sometimes the Lord see the way we are going. Mm -hmm. And he sends something to stop us so that we could take stock of where we are going. Amen. Yeah. He loves us. And uh, something is not, love. is not brutalizing our children. Some people do it out of um, ignorance and so forth and they uh -huh. brutalize the children. But mm -hmm. if, if only, and sometimes I myself look around and I said. If only the knowledge I have now, hmm. the wisdom I have now, I would, I would have done a lot of things different right. myself yes. and for my children. True. What a testimony. Amen. Yes. So Amen. That, that I think about it. Yes, sister. God Amen. The one who guide us. Yep. Amen. And it's all out of love. All out of love. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. In our children. And in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11, I'm gonna, um, I'll do the two. Hebrews 11, um, 12, 11 says, um, now, no chast now no chastising for the present seems to be joyous, right? When you're being chastised, it's not joyous enough. But what? Grievous. It's not, jo it's not, it's not joyous. Bunch of pain and affliction, I mean, chest and I mean, person. It's not a joyous feeling, but it's grievous. But it is, but nevertheless, after what after it is, the fruit of what righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So it produces a habit mm -hmm. of what of righteousness. So sometimes here, the parents say, Um, it, um, it just can, uh, hurt me more than they hurt me. They just understand why are they talking about the mm -hmm. pain. That is to, to something to inflict yeah. pain, but you have to inflict the pain in order for the child to come to his or her right senses. Yeah. And it doesn't when you say um when we say um correction to and and you know chasing and chatter, chatter, it doesn't even have to be physical. Right. Yeah, right. It doesn't even have to be physical, but the conversations we have and the mm -hmm. way we say things. And would have spent more time to elaborate if we had the full knowledge of what we're doing, you know. Yes. Right. So that we could really um, just instill mm, it yes. even in a better way. Because some of us get rebuke, but it's just grab your bit, 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 and they send you off on your own. Uh, Something yes, wondering, what, what she really beat me for? 
She's a long way. Exactly. You know? But in, and that is just sister back as well. If we had the knowledge and they had it, but we have to understand too, is at the point of where everybody is in their life when they're faced yes. with these things. Because yes. I, back then, my grand great grandparents and my grandparents and my parents, they do as much as to what they know. Right. Uh, yes. So now we come and have the knowledge and we got our grandchildren now, children and grandchildren. What we miss with the children, we need to spend a little time with the grandchildren and try to instill that in them. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. We got to break it at some point because none of us had it and a, a lot of us regret certain many things that we have done, even in raising our children. Yes. That's um, what I'm saying. It's I, mm -hmm. I have this friend and she was raised by her aunt. They were raised by her aunt, a great aunt. And I, she, that lady didn't have any children, but she was such a loving person. Mm -hmm. They they were telling me, they said she, when they do anything, and she even beat them, and, and she would say, you crying, hush your mouth. My hand is hurting me more than you. And she would tell them, she would say, look, what, look, I am trying my best. What I am doing, I'm doing for you. I am trying my best to provide for all you. And look what all you're doing. And she will sit down and she will talk to them. One of them say she would get, like if they do anything, and she would get a whip and put it in the house there. And she said the night they can't sleep because they're not licking, waiting for them in the morning. And in the morning she would say, I ain't beating you. You had it last night because you couldn't sleep all night. <laughs> so I ain't beating you again. Sorry, can't yeah. you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 She was a wise lady. She was That's a right. wise lady. She, yeah. And that I'm saying, mm. sometimes people are, um, having a child doesn't make you a mother, you know. Right, right. and it's not yeah. all about the boof, boof, boof. Right. Mm -hmm. Having a child doesn't make you a mother, but they have people who don't have children and they are mothers. That's why they do things to make you think. You think, you think, use you, use you, use you, use you, you, you know, develop yeah, yourself, and, you think. And there yeah. are some who have mother who have children and they are murderers. Sister <laughs> um, <laughs> Clark, now we talk about the beating and talking. Sometimes <laughs> when you look back, is um, Something just hit me that, you know, something. I better you didn't get the beating and, and Christian after a while than get the verbal abuse. Because to the day, you would have remembered that. You would have remembered that negative thing and maybe hold it against the person. No, but what, I'm, I'm, that was just a, an incident I'm no, saying, no. you know, because no. of the way it was. No, but if you're going to reason with them, it's not supposed to be verbal. But a lot no, of people got got a lot of verbal abuse. Yes. And they have yes. parents who tell the train, oh, you're not going to become nothing. You're going to be this, yeah. you're going to be that, you're going to be the other. Yes. And they just didn't yes. instill the right thing in you. I wish you wasn't born. I wish I didn't make you. The beating would have wear off, wear off, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it would have get some kind of language. With that would have, you would have get some kind of language and all that, some kind of verb, as we just say. Mm -hmm. yeah. look at but the beating and it just yeah. crazy, I wonder because you know you go wear off but that them verbal abuse, you know right sometimes it's a lifetime, yeah. you know right yes so i'm going to yeah. do a question 14 yeah. here it says what courage and strength therefore should come to us even in our affliction it says um it says in verse um 12 of hebrews in chapter I just read wherefore lift up your hands which hang down and and what and fee and the fever needs. So it, it, it gives you like something to build to build you up. And also Job 4, 3 to 4 says, Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholding him that was fallen, and thou hast strengthened the fever knees. And Isaiah 35, 3, strengthen he the weak hands and confirm the fever knees. So when we are corrected, it's for us to become what? Upright and to be owning our, our, our needs in our, in our hands so that we'll, we'll do the right thing. So the, the next wrong will be different, right? And you know, sometimes when we're doing wrong and we're being corrected, we fully well know that what we're doing is wrong. 
Yes. But we don't want nothing. So we put up a front and we get yes. become confrontational rather than being humble. Oh, yeah. sister. As to yes. what somebody is telling us. Sometimes it's, we don't want correction and that's why I have a whole lot of us where we are. We just want, if somebody would encourage us in what we're doing, we figure, okay, they love us, they're not condemning us. But mm-hmm. sometimes we have to confront the problem in order to get rid of it. And it's oh. not every... um. Rebuke is bad. Sometimes it's just the way you're supposed to do it in love. Because yeah. if I'm your friend, and I am, I always say, and I tell you, if I'm my, your friend, you and I are friends, and you see me doing something wrong, and you can't tell me that it's wrong. You're not my friend. I'd rather you tell me than a total stranger come up to me and tell me, hey, what you're doing is wrong. Da, 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 da. I mean, are you being there all the time? I know that I'm right, and you ain't saying nothing what? to me. But sometimes, you know? Sister Clark, sometimes you yourself know what you do wrong. And right. They, yeah, sometimes you, you know you You're right. You know you're doing it wrong when people rebuke you. Instead of you turn and say, thing, you put up this big roof and then you're not speaking to the person after that. And you should process it and, and be better. That's right, Sister Clark. And you know, Sister and Clark, you know, as you, you know what I hate? I hate that. You, you think, and some people trying to shut you up. Yeah. You know? yeah. Things, and we, think, and another yes, thing we're cutting your sister back up. Right. And we've got to remember, God ain't going to come down in person and stand up before he give us his word, and he got no hands but all hands, no feet but all right. feet, no mouth but all mouth. So we got to listen to when people talking to us, too, because God, we yeah. asking God to send. Lord, send me this, help me. And when he sends somebody to help us, we don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. You know, we have to we have to be, be more critical thinkers. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So let's go on to um, um, 15. What did Job say in the midst of his affliction? Job, Job 13, verse 13. Somebody find that. Job 13, verse 13. What did Job say in the, mid of, in the midst of his affliction? Oh, God. <laughs> Somebody ain't going to sleep. <laughs> Job 13, 13. Job 13, verse 15. Okay. Ouch, ouch. Don't close that book. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. Okay. So that should be our motto, right? Though we mm-hmm. have affliction, we should still trust God uh, no matter what. Yep. <laughs> that's so when funny. we should that's when we need to trust them even more. <laughs> but, yeah. so funny. That's what I wake up with in, in my mind this morning. That's my theme for the day. Wow. Mm-hmm. But um I think too. Where, where can we go? If we um to whom shall we go even though we are going through our affliction? Mm-hmm. Oh there is no Who other we go person to the Lord? Him, so we have to still trust God. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's hard, you know. It's mm-hmm. hard. But what I usually say to, to God, I say, Lord, wow. some things I don't understand, mm-hmm. but I still believe in you. I believe in you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have to trust God in everything. And I don't think any of us go to quarter of what Job is. You think it's easy? Nothing. You, you lose, say quarter, not even at one tenth. You lose everything. You lose your children. Sometimes we lose one. Somebody lose one child. I mean, we have children. And if anybody come and say, um, give, I need one. You ain't giving away. My nope. mother say, my mother say, people don't even give, give away chicken. Chicken again. Mm-hmm. You remember, people used to give away chicken. Mm-hmm. People don't give away no chicken, so she not give away mm-hmm. children. Then mm-hmm. instead of she gave away, like she she taken. Me the only mm-hmm. one who wasn't there. That's but all right. Give you chicken. You solve mm-hmm. a purpose, Man, right? And mm-hmm. um, they always say this lady she had so many, she had many children, and Very somebody well. wanted one, 
And she said, no, me can't give me this one. This one, it costs one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the one here look too much like your father. And the she one find here, extra to keep every one of them. <laughs> she find everything. Why she could not have give away Give away any. one. Mm -hmm. Right? She find everything. And that is like with Jesus. He would find a way to save. He would give every one no. of us an opportunity to be us. saved. He loved every one of one us. Of us the, the same. The only thing in our life a sin. That's right. True, true. And we have to, you know, give up and all. We, and God is a loving God. And as you say, he don't like sin. And we have to understand. The only yeah. thing God wants to get rid of here yes, is sin. sin. Yeah. And if we align ourselves with sin, we will go down with the sin. So if we don't yeah, want we, to go down with the sin when he beats, when he will destroy, we have to get yeah, away from because, sin. Because he said your sin has separated you. Yes. You separate us, yeah. our iniquity. So but we cannot be on the side of sin. Yeah, but he gave us hope. He said yes. if we can't mm -hmm. our sin. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. So when we, we say, go. people normally say, oh, God is so loving him, and he's going to destroy people. Them. Uh -huh. He not destroying, God is not destroying, you're you destroying yourself. yourself. Because you what God is trying to do is to get rid of sin. Sin and sin only if you, but if you go on the side of sin, and you align with sin, and you become sin, then God has to, has to be destroyed. You're going to be destroyed with it. So it's your choice. Yeah. Why, why do you say, why do you think he said the wages of sin is death? But, death. Mm -hmm. but the gift of the God. Gift of God is eternal life. There's a there way is, out. There's a way out. Yeah. And there is a way out. So, wow. Amen. So we have two texts Amen. here. What is God calling scriptures? Um, 2 Corinthians 1 3. It says, which is one of my favorite texts for funerals. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. So he's called the God of all comfort. Yeah. And then, in um, whom does God comfort? 2 Corinthians 7, 6. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 6. Nevertheless, God, that comforted those that are cast down, Comfort us by the coming of Titus. So God is a comforter to those who are what? Yes. To those who are yes, no. cast down. Yes, no. So, Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. What promise is made to those that mourn? Matthew chapter 5, um, five verse 4. You all know that yes, one. That's one shall it shall be comforted. It shall be comforted. Let's say that. that mourn for they shall be what? Comforted. Comforted. That means grief, as we studied last week, is a form of therapy, right? Grief is a form of therapy. So sometimes yeah. it's good to cry out your soul, cry out, because that's the time when you're going to what? Get rid of all that emotional but, um, bottled up energy, right? Yeah. And why does God comfort us in our tribulation? Somebody read to me 2 Corinthians 1 4. Why does God comfort us in our tribulation? 2 Corinthians 1. When comfort, oh, come. okay, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You are just a hair. Maybe read it a lot. Who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith, wherewith we ourselves are comforted by God? By God. So the same comfort that you receive, what God expects you to do. So if God is comforting for you, he expects you to what? Comfort, comfort those who are, comfort yep. others. So anything that we are going through is not just for ourselves, but it's also for what? For the benefit of others. So let us always remember that. One who has passed through trouble and affliction himself and received comfort from God is better able to minister comfort to others. Isn't that so? So if yep. you're going through a trouble, situation and affliction, and you have received that comfort from God during your time of your trouble and your affliction, you're better able to minister to those. 
who are going through a similar situation. So let us not lose hope. So how should we sympathize with others in their sorrows? Let's look at Romans 12, verse 15. Romans 12, verse 15. And also Job 6, verse 14. So Romans 12, 15. Rejoice okay. with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. You see what I'm saying? So be glad when somebody is excited and, and, and is joyous. Rejoice yeah. for them. And if they yeah. are weeping, then weep with them. And I think that's something that human beings need to learn. You understand? When people are happy and having a, 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 a rejoicing time, you know, Instead of we rejoice and be happy for the individual, sometimes we get that we get um, red eye or green eye. Jealousy, 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 yeah, jealousy, jealousy. And, jealousy, and, and jealousy. And I call it red eye. Them. The jealousy swell up in we heart and we don't envy the people for the little joy they enjoy. Yeah, we criticize them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, amen. But when we are rejoicing, we want others to rejoice with us. We're supposed yeah. to give as well as we want. Amen. And just Lots of epic. But, 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 it, it, there's, you know, the human being is something else, you know. <laughs> we are something <laughs> else. Mm -hmm. Now somebody, ha somebody happy, and we criticize them. Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody sorry for somebody in a tent, <laughs> and, and we rejoice. Oh, that God for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know? Well, oh, me, uh, you remember? We you got know? reverse, reverse psychology. We were um this woman um uh, tell us about this lady. She um she had a couple of kids. You know, she'd been abused and all that. And a pastor came to the area and he fell in love with this woman. And he wants to marry this lady. But people wasn't happy for her. They wasn't happy for her. You know what they did? Good enough. They go to the pastor and they tell and the whole life story. They went to the depth of the sea. Gosh. And that is where they start to pull stuff out. Mm. You know? But he didn't pay them no mind. Mm -hmm. oh so you see, you see, you see how the human, how human does operate. Yeah. As you rightly said there. Yeah. Sometimes we it's hard for us to be happy for other people. It's just selfish. You know? Um, I I, I share all the realms of the earth to mm. bring up stuff instead of just be happy. Yeah, as um, Sherry, uh, Sherry remember that I remember a young man was, um, he was friending with this young lady and a lady, another woman meet him and say, um, Harry, you going, you taking that woman, you know, see she has how much children she have already. The, the guy say, Mary, if it was your daughter, you weren't glad she gets somebody. Mm -hmm, good. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it was your daughter, you weren't glad she gets somebody. Hmm. So people, people would be people anyway. Mm -hmm. sure. We selfish. We just want good for us and none for others. Yeah, good good yeah. for us. When good come, we keep it up. And we, we expect Nothing should happen go to anybody else. Um like like um do you ever receive like somebody send you a, um, a text telling you about but they give this eight hundred dollars, they get five thousand dollars and if you get yours as yet and whatever. Mm -mm. I don't know if you guys ever received the text. Mm -mm. They're supposed to call you to join, you know, they receive from one oh. organization or so yes, I think I know that. You think if they find that money, yeah, they get that money? Do you think they, us, they will get to tell us anything about their money. Yeah, no? <laughs> you know, they will not tell us. They will keep that secret to themselves. Mm -hmm. Why they don't? Why they don't give it to their families? Build up all their family first. Yes, mm -hmm. for charity. Yeah. So Job six fourteen in conjunction is how should we sympathize with us in their sorrow? To him that is afflicted, pity should be shown from his friend, but he forsaketh the fear of the Almighty. So we should be showing pity um, to those that are being afflicted. Yep. 
that should be our attitude. Um, um, 21 says, Does Jesus sympathize with us in our affliction? Let us go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. Somebody read that, please. Does Jesus sympathize with us in our affliction? Of Somebody course, see. you're right Hebrews there 4. with us. No, 4. 4. 15, verse 15. Okay, good. Somebody read. Let's just find Sister Sherry. You go ahead. Yeah. At the same time. And he taught mm -hmm. in their synagogue. No, Hebrews, oh, somebody, Hebrews somebody chapter 4, ahead. verse 15. Yeah. Hebrews 4, 15. Okay, I can read it for you if you all haven't found it. So we have not a high priest, which what? The feelings of our infirmities. What was in all points, like us, yeah. yet without sin. Same. So she doesn't know what we are going through, okay? So mm -hmm. the, the high priest who have, who have taken on the sinful nature here, and yeah. therefore, you know how to... Uh, uh, um, uh, but yet yeah. Jesus um, was without what? Sin. Yeah. Sin. All right, so, somebody find John 11. John 11, what? Third. Verses 33 to 35. How did he manifest his sympathy in the case of Mary and her friend? Jesus wept St. John 11, 35. Yes. So we read that for me. John 11, verses 35. 11, from which verse? From verse 35. From verse what? 33 to 35. Okay. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come see. see. Jesus wept. Amen. And you see, that, that Jesus wept, and if Jesus wept, we should be able to um, weep too, right? We should be able to weep too. Whether you're a man or woman, and to show Jesus was a, was man, and mm -hmm. he wept. He had emotion, and he showed it. And these days, if a man tear drop from a man, everybody call them weak, and they look up, and then men mm -hmm. keep up everything in them, and they beat so much, and they don't want to cry. They make their chest so puff up in the air. They mm -hmm. need to be just be themselves, and don't pay people no mind. If you're hurt and weep, somebody will weep with you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And Jesus, you see, Jesus was groaning in his spirit and he was troubled. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, and because he, and it's he had a heart of compassion. He was sorrowful for them. They were weeping. They were sad. Exactly. Exactly. So, so the, like he, and he instructed us, he said, when they weep, weep for them. And he did it. He ain't telling us something that he didn't do. We got to remember, these instructions that God give us, he walked this way and he experienced it. Exactly. 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 And it also said he was touched with, with, with the feelings of all infirmities. infirmities. Exactly. So not alone for Mary and her friends did Jesus weep in her. Looking down no. to the ages, he saw the tears That's and right. the heart, which He weep over Jerusalem time. too. In this world, his heart was touched with human woe and he wept with those that wept. So not alone for Mary again and her friends did Jesus weep. Looking down nope. to the 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 ages. Tears, which death would bring to mankind in this sin stricken world, his heart was touched with human law and he wept with those that wept. And whatever, but look at the wait, now cut you look at the verse that follow after. He said, Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Yep, how much of us sympathize that, that, with somebody that, that, that somebody else could look at us and say, Lord, look how she loved them. Oh, look how he loved her. You know, I remember there was this lady, a neighbor to me, and she died. And um, she died suddenly. That family used to just drop down like that. And at the day of the funeral in the church, I went to sit with her sisters. The sister asked me to sit with her. And when the sister started crying, I just started crying, crying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I promised myself not to sit down with people who cry. 
Because when you go and you see them crying, you feel so sorry for them that you start to cry too. Mm -hmm. You know, this week I sat on my couch and I cried. There was an old, like I said, I followed this, this, the, the, the trial. And there was an older gentleman. I think he was in his, in his 80s. He was an older gentleman, and he testified when they asked him a question. The man said, oh, Lord, have mercy. And the poor man cried until they had to give up recess. And I sat on the couch, and I fell for the poor man for the trauma he was experiencing again that I started crying too. Yeah. Yeah. I felt so sad for the poor man. I said, oh, the poor old man have to breathe. I mean, he didn't in a fever, but I said, that poor old gentleman yes. got to relive this again. And I felt so hard for him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there's a good promise for us in Romans 8, 28. Whatever may come and what blessed assurance has everyone who loves God. It says what? And we know that all things work together for good. Yes, yeah, good to them that love the Lord. And to them are called according to his, his purpose. purpose. And we may not see the good brethren sometimes, right? We may not see the good, but when, when later on, when you get into a little bit more of spiritual maturity, then you see the good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Then you see the good. So all things work together for good for us. And when we get, but when, when things are working so out for us, we must remember it's a blessing from God. It ain't nothing that you specially do. Yeah. It ain't and coming through yourself. It is a gift of God. It's God blessing you. He might okay. instruct you to do certain things in order to get the blessing, but the blessing ultimately come from him. Some of us go through life and believe that everything we have, we accomplish it on our own. Our own. Nothing yes. we have is ours. It is a gift from God. Amen. Well, sister, I, I was saying, I was commenting on the text. It said, right. mm -hmm. all things work together to them for good to them that love the Lord. So you have to love the Lord. There is something. No? Yes. The point Probably. is you have to love the Lord. Then it will work mm -hmm. out for you to good, for good. Yeah. Yes, Sister Bata. So how sometime, does it so, yeah. Sometimes I used to say, when things happen to me, I say, Lord, you say everything worked together for good to I don't understand really and truly I see the good in this thing, but I trust you. Amen. I, I usually be human, you know, because sometimes something happens and you wonder, Lord, where is the good in this? Right. right. And but eventually, if you wait I'm, long enough, you could see it, you know. Yes, yes. But at the, that, point, but at the at moment, moment yep. mm -hmm. at the moment, you will see a thing good in thing. it. Mm -hmm. a, mother, a mother lose her child just mm -hmm. so. Lord, he had. You see any yeah. good in this? No. Like the man in Queens, the, the wife just walk out to go around the corner of the Walgreens to get something, something she just went to get. By the time she reached across the street, a hail of bullet, and she got cut down, right? They leave him and the two children. Oh, and he yeah. said, he, he said, I am I'm not angry of them. I forgive them, but I just wanted to stop. We cannot live like this. Mm. Hmm? Mercy, mercy. Oh, God. Mm. You know, mm. it's hard to see the good. What purpose? Mm. Yeah. And it would have taken her just a couple of minutes. All she had to was cross the street and just go right around the corner at the Walgreens, grab the thing and come back. Five minutes. Oh, God. Oh, a hail a bullet. Class? And one of, the, one of the young men, 19 years old, they're still looking for the next one. What is wrong? Yeah. Yeah. It's a clock. That brings yeah. me to, uh, to think about, I don't know if you remember this incident in Long, somewhere in Long Island. Was it a um, flood, like a tsunami, and somebody, um, baby was swept away from the hand or something like that, you remember? So I thought, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. We had some um, flood or something, and you know, in Long Island side, and the lady yes. um, just, um, you know, disappeared something from that, her hand or whatever. Something mm. happened like that in, in St. Vincent, where this, I think it's Alice's sister. She mm -hmm. the, the flood coming down and she going with the children. She have one one hole and and the, and the gush of water just take one from her. Oh yeah. boy! Ah. Oh. So I remember that. We have encouragement here. It says if if one loves God, he may rest in affliction. Good will come. Every out of every and affliction, good will come. We, you know it's yeah. it's 
hard in our human mind to see the good, but it will come. And in, in bereavement, like in bereavement, like whom should we not sorrow? And it says in first Thessalonians 4 13. But I would not yeah. have ignorant okay. concerning them which are asleep, but he sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So our hope must be kept alive in order to take us through this time of grieving. And when our friends fall asleep in death, with what words are we co to comfort one another? And this one is a, an, a sweet one which I love, which has been read every time. It says, if we believe that Jesus died, First Thessalonians 14, 18, but if we believe that Jesus died and arose again, even so them also with in Jesus, with sleep where? In Jesus. In Jesus. Him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be what? Caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall so we ever shall. be with the Lord. Comfort one another with we the Lord. We have to die. We die in the Lord. Because Amen. if we die in the Lord, God is going to bring all those that die in the Lord. So, so. Sister Bacchus, you were going to touch back, right? You were saying something you can't see the good in it. I'll give you a little a little story. My cousin had triplets, two girls and a boy. And one day the boy they had dirt bikes because he lived out in Hampstead with his father. Anyway, he was going up on the, on the bike and this delivery truck knocked him off and ran over him. The, oh the, um, the coroner said he don't think he feel any pain because his chest was crushed. Oh, God. Mm. Uh, mm. The uh. two girls and those that triplet was really close. I don't know by the mercy of God they, they 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 were able to hold up. They mm. had another brother, and he and the brother won. You know they were talk, but like not really close, hanging out because he was much older, and he was really into like the um the uppity lifestyle. He would fly from here to different Caribbean country and planes and all the people he could put. He had a line of travel bags, Mark Christopher Findlay on it. His name was signature on it on the bags. And he was doing well. And when his brother passed, he was so distraught that he could not understand why. And he went to one of his aunts and he said, he didn't go to church or anything like that. When they were small, their grandmother would take them, but she, she went to, a, you know, not an Adventist church, but she went took them to church there and so. And when he grew up, he didn't have time for church and everything. And through the day to his brother, he went to one of his aunties and I don't understand why. He said, but I think I need to understand why. I think I need to give my life to and I want to go and study to be a pastor. <laughs> now, this boy didn't, he didn't go to college. He had a high school education. I don't even know if he had a high school education. He, he wanted to go. And his aunt said to him, she said, where do we want to go to? Then she said, I will help you. But you got to go to a Seventh-day Adventist seminary. And he said to her, Auntie, whatever. And he gave up everything he had to tell them he's done. No more that. He gave up his line of stuff. He was making money and everything. He went to school. The boy, when he sent me, I never sent him little change and stuff. When he sent me his grades and stuff, me said the boy are passing a Greek and all. me said, but my goodness. <laughs> Wow. And he finished, he went to well, he went to Costa Rica, one of those countries, to do Spanish for a year. He went to Texas to go to school. And now he got a job as a junior pastor in a church. Hmm. So I'm looking at this as out of the good, the bad. Out of the bad came, come good. Come something positive. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Every now and then he would send me stuff. He'd say, Auntie, that is what he calls me, Auntie. He say, and always my cousin's son. At least my cousin's, I have a cousin's grandson. So then my cousin's daughter's son. He calls me, Auntie, would send me little stuff. He said, Auntie, this has been a blessing to me. I hope it will be a blessing to you too. Wonderful, wonderful. Wow. 
Out of evil. Out of evil. Oh, man. So will it never make for bad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Mm. I, just hope that, I just hope that that one, the one who died, that his, his life was in harmony with... You know, well, that's because, another story, too, because I don't think he had a, a chance to say, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, God, have mercy. Mm -hmm. God is mercy. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So. <laughs> yes. Pastor Bino, I have a question, please. Go ahead. Um, the dead in Christ, at the song of the trumpet, the dead in Christ shall rise. I I know the reason the reason aspect of it is the power of God, but do you think um do you is there any kind of a clarification where the, uh, the dead um actually hear the trumpet also? Yes, because of the trumpet the trumpet is where the trumpet they're gonna the place to place the to the grave and place the tomb. Yeah, when people the dead will wake up because of the trumpet. Yeah. And the trumpet is like going to wake them. Um, Exactly. If you sleep in tent, tent, if you sleep in and somebody come in and make a whole lot of noise, you're saying, go wake up. Yes. <laughs> but but dead. sleeping, but the dead, I'm just telling the difference. <laughs> well, it's the same kind of thing, sleep is a death when you're sleeping in a thing. Yeah. So, that trumpet so, was, that, that not any, any kind of trumpet, you know, that is a special that trumpet. But that's the trumpet of the Lord. Yeah, that power, is a special. Power. So, that would wake the dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all yes. to show the power in it. Yes, the tomb. It, uh, it yes, the tomb and it mm -hmm. gets all there and wake up. Yeah. Amen. Okay, Pastor what, Diana, you see what you ever see them have? What a beautiful, uh, what a beautiful <laughs> sight for see all those people that's jumping up from. I'm telling you. Yeah. 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 And I think Sister Marcus, I think the dead robe going to fall off and they're going to come up in the beautiful, just like how Jesus laying cloth going to come off. They're going to yeah, come up yeah, all come clothed up. in their white robes. Amen. Oh. God will clothe them in the robe of righteousness. Yes, yes, yes. So, so Sister Clark, what happened to the nice suit that people bury with? That's not fair. Huh? A lot of them have nice suits they bury with in the casket. That's well, not tell them, tell them, tell the jewel and thing, tell the jewel and thing, people pack on and them now, uh, and the old coffin where we, instead of we go buy a little box like the jewel and keep the money for three, the jewel and then we go big, old, big, big casket. I mean, I want them big one, you know. When I look at my phone and I see my little box, only one of them could say anything. If only want me in anything, I say I have to go buy it and transform me. Well, That's I exactly tell my me. children, I, 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 I told them. I told my daughter, I said to her, you see the cheapest thing they have? You know? You put me in it. I hate it. People go out there, make a show. A show. For, for setting up, bury them. Oh, that not some baby poor parents, them are who they hungry. Nothing you know? to eat. Nothing to eat. The they the not the but when they're dead, you got to go back show. Oh, mm -hmm. some of them people. Okay. Put... And got credit card bill to pay with the food. Right. No, 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 no. Bury me in the safe. If, I, if I possible, said... you see them like a wood box, put me one in the wood box and put me down because I said, big casket don't mean very... nothing. And I, said, said, I said, and I will always say, the yeah. dead not supposed to leave no debt. You know? Oh. The dead not oh, supposed okay. to leave no debt. You showing yourself. Go ahead right. and say, yeah. oh, thing. And. I remember some years ago, this lady used to come look look at the box with the with the person. They, mm -hmm. oh, it's a good box. That's a good box. What would that have to do? Me tell her. So if it wasn't it, a good box, she had it, one for transfer them into. Hey, hey, no. If it's possible, Please if it's possible, them at work. Man. If it's aye, aye. okay. Wrap me in a sheet. Right. Okay, if sister. It, uh, okay, but I know you heard that. Eh? Me, sister Clark, and sister Baker. A, a plain and um, simple coffin, and you right. it's possible. It's okay. Sister if Clark, you, if it's possible, then get some of the selfish, selfish boxes. You know, and knock them up to the other. Listen to me, Sister Marcus. Sister Marcus is not how we go down. It's how we coming up. Yes. Right. Okay, so about you. Pull up the right thing. Pull up the right thing now. Don't worry about how I'm going down. It's how I'm coming up. Right. right. If it's possible, 
Get us quick. Me, go a go, you know them jail people as buy bail box. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me just go there, get one. Okay, let's have to pay. Put me in there. So let us Take just um, let me move just move finish these three questions here and then go straight to oh, afterwards. Let's just finish oh. these three questions. Um, what <laughs> problem do I make to the bereaved mothers? Bereaved mother, <clears throat> a text for you. Jeremiah 31, 16 says, Thus said the Lord, reframe your voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, said the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And the, mm -hmm. next, the next text in um, just now, um, what did Christ say would be the experience of his people in this world? Let's just go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse verse 33 and 20 it says um these things i have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world you shall have what tribulation, tribulation. you have good uh, cheer good cheer have i have overcome the world verily, verily i say unto you that he shall weep and lament but the world shall rejoice and he shall be sorrowful but your sorrow shall be turned into to joy joy the last text is in what respect is a reaping God's people to differ from the, their sowing? Psalms 126. Psalms 126, verse 5 through 6. Psalms 126. It says, They that sow in tears shall reap in what? Joy. Psalms 100, verse 5 through 6. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth in and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing in his sheaves with, with him. Amen? So, Man. We, we weep now and go through your trials and tribulation, but guess what? You, you Joy you comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. So I'm going to end with these two, um, these two quotes, one from me, Riley Smith. It says, sometime when all life's lessons have been learned, and sun and moon forevermore have set the things that our weak judgments here have spurned the things over which we grieve with lashes wet will flash before us out of life's dark night a star shine most in the deepest tints of blue and we shall see how all god's ways were right and how and how what we prove was love most true be of good cheer said robert l d wonden know sometime life's song will run in perfect rhythm somewhere i know all things will be attuned to perfect harmony sometimes somewhere each sad refrain shall be its own um sur seed of pain a compensation love will send will be in bringing friend to friend and all the heartaches that we bore in god's good time will be no more no amen more. do you understand the word amen are you willing to follow the word? Man. Thank you for your time. Let's pray. Oh, great God, we just want to thank you this morning. You have reminded us there's, there's a conflict in affliction. But even affliction is supposed to teach us how to be obedient. In, afflict, in affliction, we learn how to overcome and how to trust in your divine word. Help us all to look at our situation that when we are going through any trial, tribulation, or circumstances, that you are with us because you promised in Isaiah 43 that even though we walk through the waters, it shall not overflow us, and yeah. even through the fire, it shall not burn us. Yes. Help us to keep your precious promises in our frontal lobe, even during this time and troubling time of COVID 19 and her relatives. Help us to keep Psalms 91 close to our bosom and close in our frontal lobe. Can you say, No noise from pestilences that is in the air shall come nigh our dwelling? And God will believe and exercise faith in those precious promises that you have revealed through your servant, King David. Oh, yes. Help us to trust in you and to realize that no weapon that formed against your people shall prosper. And when the devil shall come in like a flood, you promise to lift up a standard against him. We just want to thank you for blessing us and thank you for such a wonderful discussion that we have extracted and we have really juiced the word of God. Help us to apply these, these principles to our life. And we thank you for everyone on the Facebook Live and on this Zoom call. Help us all to remember that when we come together, every time is a message for us to get our house in order. Help us to understand that death is just asleep. 
and we experience it every single night and we experience resurrection in, in the morning. The only thing that is missing is this mortal putting on immortality. So help us not to be afraid, but help us to respect you and realize that you are the resurrection and the life. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. And it's not for us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 For your time in today's service, and we'll go straight.